accidentally muted my mic. Hello, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the South America DPC Division 2 match. It is going to be Balrog versus Gorilla's Pride battle between the Peruvian teams. My name is DK Truman and accompanying me in this one is the King of SA, Astini himself. It's a pleasure to be here with this uh, Balrogs against G-Pride, two teams that have showed some good Dota the first round, so both standing uh, with one win, zero losses. Balrogs, they've won against what we thought to be the favorite our way, so we kind of imagined that the two teams that come from the open qualies are somehow the favorites, but we might be biased because now it's going to be the first time that we see an op open qualifier team play against a team that was already on second division, so super excited to see what both have to show. Yeah, definitely going to be an interesting show in between these teams because, well, we, we didn't see the open qualifier teams. Uh, one of them, actually, that the one that dumpstered Balrogs previously is uh, Wolf Team. They actually got taken down a round so far, which is a, a pretty interesting result because they lost against the Balrogs previously. And, I mean, that is, you know, a team with HFM, 4DR, Tavo, King, RD, Yadomi. You expect them to be in Division 1. So, uh, big yeah. plays coming out from the Balrogs, who, to be fair, have a pretty solid roster themselves, also very well known in the region. And was very impressed with their previous performance as well. But, Gorillas Pride, I mean, they've been in this uh, in this spot a couple of seasons now. They, they should know how the ball rolls, and they definitely have played against the Balrog players before, but... I'm going to quickly go over towards a prediction coming out. Who do you think is going to be able to take this series? Oh, it's a very close match, I expect. Let's say 2-1 for a Jeep ride. Okay. Even though Barogs is the favorite, I think now this hard carry, this guy is so good. And I believe he can make an upset here. Okay, well, you heard it here. The draft Five is live, so we'll be heading into the draft as well. See ban. what, of course, the amazing predictions are going to be from Astini. But yeah, I'm going to go with Balrogs. I've been impressed with their performance. Haven't seen Gorilla's Pride perform just yet, so I'll definitely be looking out for them. But from last season, I've, I've seen a couple of their matches. But the Balrog side, I mean, they were very impressive in the uh, close qualifiers that we did cast. Five seconds. Yeah, what I expect is like, we see those huge names like, uh, as you mentioned, HFN, Tavo, 4 dr on our way, uh, now they're called Wolf Team, and Barogs just beat them. So we expect that Barogs is the best team because we are like taking names into consideration. And now we're gonna really see the game that they are showing. And I'm really excited to see what Gorilla Sprite has to show. Barogs, we already seen. They played very well, they have that Razor, they have that Io and the Weaver. So basically, if you're a Gorilla Sprite, you're playing against a first pick on Barrocks, you need to decide what you're gonna play against. Io, Razor, Weaver, so they already take the Razor out, they take the Weaver, they might play against the Io. I mean... Um, if I'm looking at this Balrogs lineup, I wouldn't want to play up against, uh... Very nasty uh, Draken Mars that we've seen in the close qualifier, where he just dumpstered everyone. Ten I'd definitely be me. wary of that. Same with uh, his Five Centaur, though Centaur's seven. not necessarily first ban material, though these bans are pretty interesting. The Razor ban, we've seen a little bit of surges on that one. Nyx is always annoying. There we get to see the Mars. Oh my lord, predicted it. Finally, I get one correct. Yeah, they were playing IO with Razor and IO with Mars. Those are the two IO openings they have. But they know if they don't pick Mars here, Gorilla Splite's gonna steal it. And they already showed Tide Snap. Very strong combo, very strong team fight. Good way to get people over the arena with the Snapfire cookie. Of course, you need to time it correctly and whatnot, but it is a way to escape. Seconds. And the Tidehunter in general doesn't have necessarily that many Five hard link counters. It could be a problem if you're up against like an Ursa. Medusa. Doesn't really... I mean, that's like a strange matchup. Always Medusa versus Tide. They, they... Tide doesn't necessarily farm. But can de definitely be dangerous for Medusa if 
step out of bounds for just a couple of seconds. Ten seconds. Yeah, it really depends on the position five that they will have together with the Dusa. They can have like an Abaddon, an Ogre, one melee hero that can soak that damage so she doesn't get so much harassed. Uh, maybe Undying because you're against two strength heroes, but again, Snapfire is super good against the tomb Tombstone. But they already showed their win condition, right? So it's something we see on first pick drafts that uh, you just go for that 8 pick with your win condition because the other team's gonna be able to counter you on two picks on the second, on the last pick of second phase, last pick of third phase. So you just wanna have your win condition clear and draft uh, to protect this win condition. They played the Dusa on the two matches they won against uh, our way, so they are pretty confident with that, I'm sure. Looking, of course, like a pretty decent Dusa game, of course. Like the fact that they banned out Panda on Gorilla's Pride because of position 5 Panda could be very annoying to deal with in the laning stage and afterwards because the only Panda ever really needs levels. Ten Items is nice, remain. but that's a, you know, a far off second for a Pulse 5, five uh, Panda. Remain. And the Ursa, of course, banned out because, well, Ursa is decent against Deuce, PL is decent against Deuce. They kind of need to get rid of all the counters at AM, though I don't really think that many people will play AM currently. Feels very weak in uh, any team fight. Whereas this is a fairly heavy team fight meta with a lot of tank heroes. Yeah, and Dusa just plays really fast, right? So you go for that early rush, you have Aegis on like 17, 18 minutes, you have Iskadi on top of that, and you just go marching through lanes and anti mage. He just got like his battle furry and is. Almost with Manta, but not even that, so he can't fight at all. He needs to cut waves, but you just prote protect one wave with Mars. You have like the the shield to protect uh, from the hits of the Glyph, and you just go through one lane. Think about uh, SF safe lane. I've seen it a lot, especially in <laughs> South America as well, where you just skip raise and go for the right click build, but. It is a pretty good matchup if you go for the full physical against Dusa. Yeah, and surprise Gorilla's Pride, they don't go for the IO ban. I know it's very unlikely to see IO Ten on second seconds. phase. Teams usually just first pick the hero. But they could Five still play IO here. Be. They played Mars with IO. They it, it's a good pair with Dusa. And I feel like Barox, they just guaranteed two heroes that they love to play, which is the Mars Dusa, but Ayo is still open, so I would see no problem for Barox to pick the Ayo here. Yeah, but that uh, ban of the Disruptor is a pretty uh, interesting choice in that regard. If you were, for instance, been getting yourselves that uh, Ayo, as you mentioned, Disruptor would have been a pretty good pick on top to just send them back in that. But the Tusk Chosen here, I should seconds. block, no way to get rid of it, Snowball save. If someone gets caught Five in the arena seconds. is pretty nice, and even to snowball someone out of the arena. They've got pretty good saves on the side of Gorilla's Pride, plus Snapfire and Tusk Radiant in the early game. If they ever get together with the, well, the Tusk's buff onto the Snapfire's little shredder, and people die very quickly. Yeah, and they have a very fast Roche, so if they win a team fight close to Roche, they can steal that Aegis from Dusa. Because you have Tag Team, you have Minus Armor coming from Snapfire, from Tide, and it's a super strong lane, even though it's two melees. Tusk and Tide, they go go very well together, because the Tag Team is procced also by the Anchor Smash, so it's like you do two attacks in one that are procced by the, by the Tag Team very fast. Yeah, and of course, if Medusa steps out of bounds, even for one second, gets hit by the Gush, slowed down. Then the Ice Shards block on top, then you've got the Minus Armor from that Gush, stand next to her, and you just beat her up together. So, you really need to be careful if you do that. Like, the lane positioning is going to be incredibly important to try and keep the Medusa alive. Especially if this is actually a Hoodwink 5, though I think this would probably be a Hoodwink 4. 5 seems to be... Looks like 4. Yeah, Five would wing would be a little bit. To pick. That is a very good uh, five, though. 
Yeah, they definitely needed that melee position 5 to soak the damage. Farduza, a hero that can trade with two strong heroes such as Tide and Tusk. But still, I think like this Elder Titan's gonna die a few times to protect the Duza. Even if it's such a strong laner, I don't think he can trade hits with a Tusk together with Tide Hunter. Honestly, it's such a. Okay, that's an. Bat mid being picked up, that means uh, Balrogs can counter the bat with whatever they want. Because they have last pick. Uh, sorry, they don't have last pick, but they know what the enemy's mid lane is going to be. The safe lane is going to be an interesting choice, though, because right now you can just ban out a lot more on the Balrog side, and there's not much left that can Five counter a Dusa. But I do really like the Tusk picks, pick this game, because you can dodge the Hoodwink ulti, the Elder Titan ulti, the Elder Titan Storm, the Mars Arena. So many spells that you can dodge and get people out of harm's way. If this Tusk plays a, I mean, a really good game, then they have a massive asset over. Yeah. And even though the bat's going to be countered on the lane, you don't care about this as Batrider anymore. Batrider is not... That hero that you pick, like as a cheese pick that you're gonna stomp per lane, doesn't work like this anymore. You don't pick to win lanes. Of course, if you have a favorable lane, you're super happy. But it's about having Lasso that's a lockdown into BKB and Barrocks, they don't have any save in supports. And you don't really wanna pick like Legion Meat or Abaddon Meat. And even picking that, you're gonna have a save, but you have a save on your core. So he's gonna not gonna be positioned like on the back line to save dudes and so Ten so i think batrider here is pretty solid for the game might do a lot Five i mean you did mention they can take roach very quickly if you pick a very fast safe laner like a uh, wraith king for it or something along those lines ck you could honestly push this game very quickly uh, in favor of gorilla sprite and take it before that medusa's farm I don't know, I feel Dusa Power Spike and same goes for Luna and TA is so high on the first Roche that you need to let them do Roche and just keep lines for that 5 minutes and then you actually enter in the game. If you try to man fight the Dusa into the Roche pit on that timing that she has Kadi, you simply cannot heal her. Well, you know, but I'm talking about you take Roshan at like 15 minutes. As pride and uh, then take over the entire map because you've got a bat rider who's probably gonna have bots blink by then uh add a tusk with probably a blink behind it snap five very tanky lineup very mobile lineup you get a safe laner that can be very active and strong in the early game you could just run down balrogs it's the thing with balrogs yeah. is they have a pretty nice lineup but even though you know elder titan is a melee strength or uh, support the two supports die pretty quickly if they're jumped by any of these uh, supports of course from Pride. Yeah, but the thing yeah, is, I don't think be. that's so easy to do that Roche because you're on Dire, right? So you can't do that like sneaky Roche if you're on Dire, it's way easier to do on Radiant, so... I don't think Gorilla Sprite should go like all in because you go all in if you go for a fast draft, right? If you fail to take that early rush, then Dusa is gonna outscale you anyway. So I think they just need to take a slower pace. Yeah, but the problem is you chose a bat rider, so you're definitely going banking on like mid game. The rest of the supports and the Tide Hunter also kind of screams mid game. And the safe laners that are left, there aren't too many left that can take a medusa down in the late game like you look at a Art there's sniper Gordon. no don't talk about sniper oh my sniper. god it's a sniper how do you know garbage hero why no i can't, I can't believe you actually predicts this this is bs <laughs> i'm glad i was fast i had to interrupt you because i knew it was gonna come in, come fast here against the medusa Oh, this okay. is this is ridiculous! <laughs> I can't believe that this actually. Oh, uh, okay. You no, know, why not? EK is always wrong, as always. Yep. No, it's hard to see a sniper coming. The hero is not so much in the meta, but it's a counter to do the. It's like. You can defend high ground against that Aegis just by outranging her and. 
it's a super good carry matchup. The thing is, they have ways of killing that sniper, right? They have Void Spirit and Mars to jump on him, so it's not like that free sniper game where the other team doesn't have any catch, any way to jump at you. But I'm very interested about what Gorilla Sprite can show with that sniper. As I mentioned, this guy, no, I see him as a very, very strong hard carry. I really see a lot of potential on him. Sniper. It's not, come on, it's a sniper. <laughs> Who picks snipers, Aveline? If people did this in my pubs, I'd report them. <laughs> I guess, did 23 Savage play at TI, or he played at uh, yeah, previous but, tournaments? You know, they didn't end, well, no, actually, they, I don't remember if he specifically played at TI, but it, it's just a little bit heartbreaking to see that you randomly throw the prediction on one of the most garbage heroes in the game, and they just... Like, especially as you mentioned specifically, you're up against the Mars and you're up against the Void Spirit. If that snap fire and uh, the Tusk does not snowball save him, he is 100% at every time. Hmm. But, yeah, I don't think he's gonna be on early fights. I think he's just gonna farm a lot too. He has BKB. And when he has BKB, he feels very, very safe. I don't know for what build he goes, actually, if he goes something like... Uh, okay, we already can see he's going for Maelstrom. But I'd say Dragonlance, Maelstrom, BKB would be what I would be expecting. Dragonlance, BKB. Okay, it's a little bit more tanky, but, you know... That's that's the worst build. You you know you need to go Dragonlance. Like a real champ. Otherwise, you're not real. I'm reconnecting for one second because I have a fog bug. Ah, uh, always find fog bug like where you can see the entire map somehow. But yeah, I definitely think it's going to be a tough game for the sniper. I... I actually initially was going with Pride, but the sniper pick versus the Void Spirit pick, I really do like... Robo's use Void Spirit, so I'm gonna go with uh, Balrogs on this, on this from a fight. map. I definitely think that the Burna Burna Medusa can farm until she is at the kill. The Balrogs' strongest strategies when they, when I mentioned like they go Weaver, Io, or, or uh, Razor, they always pick Dusa on 8 if they would have the Weaver. So they just changed like the opening, but still have Dusa. It's their best strategy. But, I don't know, I'm just excited to see Sniper, I like the hero. Uh, wh what's there to like? He does one thing. <laughs> he stands <laughs> at range and auto attacks. I mean, at least the support Sniper is a little bit more interesting. Got like that but... concussion grenade boss thingy. Which is actually kind of cool, the fact that you heat yourself back. Yeah. And you can actually jump out of the arena with the grenade. I'm almost sure about it. I have no specific... I don't know for certain, but I would uh, probably expect that to be the case, yes. But I'm kind of disappointed with Sniper because I see the set he has and he doesn't have the... Frank, frank, you know? Oh, yeah, no. I'm, I'm happy that he doesn't have very annoying sound. Uh. Or maybe, you know, get the laser Sniper. Uh, last year's... Uh, <laughs> Last year, this year. Oh my yeah. god, that was a year ago. The times go fast, though. Top lane, Draken, who's gonna get first blood? First right clicking, Janet so gets fun. killed. And now wants the man fight up against Hoodwink, who walks into the trap. No, in comes the snowball, boom! Doesn't even lose his healing salve and now gets the kill. Okay, top lane starts it off swinging, gets a double for the side of G. This one was not for you. Yeah, it's a super strong lane with that Tusk 5, a lot of damage, and on bottom, they're doing a lot of damage to the other Titan, he has one salve, but then he's gonna be out of regen, and both Tide and Snapfire still have the salve, so Jeep Ride looking great on lanes. Elder Titan, trying to be a nuisance against the Tide, of course, leveled up the natural order for that armor reduction, Smackdown. And a good coming in. <laughs> Usa is having a all in all reasonably lane. 
Elder Titan is uh, able to. I think this Dusa is gonna scale really, really well. She thinks she has free farm. So the question is if G Pride is gonna feel strong enough to fight the Dusa or go for the late game. Are taking a lot of damage, so nice pushback coming in, sends them back. But Wink, though, on the run, almost takes down the sniper, who does still have a fairy fire to use. Snowball in, Zexa taking out another kill coming through in the top lane, Jenna continuing for more. But will be taken down and now can't really take that aggressive fight to the Mars. Pretty scary person, as you go on, charge. But I guess it does is happy to die i guess he forced to die here because he didn't have a cool here and he needed to buy regen for the sniper so he just had those clutch deaths where you want to die yeah it's uh sometimes for the better if you just uh get full seppuku okay bounty runes getting stolen by both mid laners robo z having a pretty Decent time in the mid lane, of course, not too surprising. The dice X are dropping low, is gonna get taken down. Another kill coming in. E Prime, top lane, dominating. And right now, Hoodwink doesn't have a TP for another 30 seconds after these. So, the sniper who, honestly, for a sniper, normally you tend to have a pretty tough laning stage because your auto attack damage is kind of garbage, especially against uh, a Mars. But the fact that your Tusk is just purely zoning out the enemy's offlaner, pretty good lane. Yeah, and Genex doing such a good work with the shards, uh, keeping the hero stuck, and then Sniper can just do damage with the sharp now in the area. But yeah, all the action has pretty much been in that top lane. That was lame. Yeah, but still for Balrox doesn't look that bad also they're farming on three lanes like even though Hoodwink is giving kills on top Mars getting a good farm Void Spirit is winning the lane mid because if you look at him he has like two waves to farm or one and a half so even though it looks even he's actually ahead he has 11 denies so yeah he's very well ahead yeah, definitely, uh, especially because most of those kills aren't to Zexa. They uh, went to Janek on the Tusk, so it's all things not that problematic for the side of uh, Balrogs, because Bracken still has okay ish farm, has a kill as well. It's not going to be perfect, but you're laning up against a sniper. There's a very big chance it already came into the lane with the idea. It's not going to be a perfect lane. At least yeah. you farm up a little and gold mechanics network mechanics they're kind of weird so even though sniper has been part of four kills he has less net worth than the doza because just the assist gold is aoe is almost nothing to him yeah, he's not even that far the ahead of the uh, mars the only uh, 200 gold right behind the sniper uh, pretty much one creep wave So, does have to be careful because Jennick is back in the top lane. And there's a shrapnel available. Daggy caught in sight. Nice shackle shot. Uh, sorry, pushwhack. Shackle shot. It's not a wind ranger. But it doesn't really matter because shrapnel does hurt a lot. And with the slows and the hold down from the Tusk, it's hard to try and run away without your ulti. So that. Why did he die over there? Curious if the Hoodwink's gonna go like bottom or you can TP mid and bottle refill and I don't know try to mess up with Batrider farm in the jungle or just go stacking. I feel like Hoodwink is not useful on that lane. It's not like he's suffering damage that is saving the Mars. So I think he should not come back to that lane. Honestly, top lane is lost. Like Tusk is level 4 now, uh, Sniper's almost level 5, Draken is of course almost level 5 as well, but the Hoodwink's level 2. 
Like, if you yeah. walk out into that lane, as you said, you just feed away lives. You're not doing anything. The Mars, like, he's just going to have to use his spare of Mars range to try and pass it some. But he just needs to make sure that he doesn't get caught. Yeah, and Draco, he's a very experienced offlaner, so I would guess he knows the best thing to do here yeah. now. That is basically <laughs> cutting wave, like sitting behind the tower. Because you're against Tusk Sniper, Tusk can do a lot of damage, but they can only kill you with both together. So if Sniper wants to kill you, he's going to miss his entire farm. So Sniper has to make a tough decision. Either he stops Mars for farming, but he doesn't farm either, or both of them farm. So... I think Mars should just sit behind Sniper's Tower and Hoodwing go make stacks for Dusa or go block the stacks for Batrider. Uh, there are some lanes that you should get this feeling that you shouldn't be playing the lane. Yeah, sometimes it's uh, you just uh, say, okay, it doesn't work, head out somewhere else. This is gonna I mean, he stay. could help out the side lanes. Mid's gonna be well with the void spirit. You can definitely get a, a kill. Like if you get a nice bushwhacker no on that uh, rider, is for instance. Void spirit already is winning his lane. Bottom the lane is winning. You just need to make sure top but doesn't get completely dumpstered frame. and get that sniper in a superb position where he gets a very quick milsim who, like he wants to build into that shadow blade, aka silver edge after. Up. Again. <laughs> it's a deja vu. Man, Zexa, I'm not sure if he's tilted or he feels like it's space for Mars, so he's happy with that. Well, uh, that Tusk is on four kills right now. It's a pretty nice for position 5 Tusk early in the game. Rotating towards mid, trying to guard the room, does not have any mana for the ice shards block. Like it's gonna be the room fight coming in, who picks it up? It's actually bottom lane, and Jenna just straight up dies, but now oh, charge game could be stunned, make sure sexy Yogi doesn't get himself to stomp off. And even though the haste room goes in Void Spirit's hands, getting that pretty big kill onto Jenna right there is uh, another crucial for Bowser. It's super good for, for Barox because they killed the most feeded hero in the game, Zatusk, so yeah. To have that Q streak, you feed some gold away. The bottom lane Quite just farming slow. away. Currently, Robo Z on that voice break to stop. Net worth, Tau, very low in HP. He actually gets the kill with that lasso. Turn around on towards the Hoodwing. Janik again, the bane of the Hoodwing. I am the but from the that's a big double coming in for G Pride. And they're 10 to 2 ahead with Sniper now top net worth. And they're playing really well. That was some kind of outplay, I'd say. Tau just got really, really fast on that decision. Because at first, when I look, I'm like, oh, he's. Kind of wasting Lasso and he's gonna die, but no, such a clutch play. Got it. Very close <laughs> game so far between the sides. In terms of net worth, even though the Hoodwing did die six times in seven minutes, which is uh, pretty much a respawn instantaneously die, and the items that Hoodwing wants to buy are a hand of Midas. So, yeah, I don't necessarily know. If he's, you know, tilted or anything, but I does bring to mind. Yeah. Makes you think he's probably maybe is. he's pretending. I mean, I I, I I hope he's pretending because Hoodwing with Anamitis, they, well, I don't even know what that is supposed to be. Nice stomp coming out. Going in for the Bat Rider Spear on top as well, and that's a huge kill. Um, uh, Pride got to deny the region, region rune, and Bat didn't have Lasso, so even though it's like a meaningful kill to kill the enemy mid laners, they used Arena, and now Pride can feel so strong in the map, because no Arena, Lasso is gonna be back, so, again, like, I see Pride dying, but I feel like they can be happy with that. 
Not playing though, seems to be a little bit of a fight. Rotation from Robo Z wants to get the catch onto the sniper. Nice! Bushwhack coming through, control, stun lock, the snowball save, sends him to the side or does it? Now the sniper is done. Jenik is on the run as well, but he's being chased by four radiant heroes. Does have a nice shards block. Oh, but again, a nice little bushwhack gets the kill. Dusa, as you mentioned, dies in the bottom lane to the Batrider rotation. But it is going to be a pretty big brawl so far. 16 kills in the first nine minutes. That is the Dota we want to see. Yeah, uh, seems like at first again seems like a good trade for Balrogs because they kill the sniper, they kill the Tusk. But they're gonna lose their tower on bottom lane, and they're not doing damage on top lane. So again, Jeep Ride should be happy. Top lane, Exiogit on the run. Arena comes out, catch onto the sniper, going for another kill. That would be huge. The smack comes in, and now he's down for the count, and that means he doesn't have a TP scroll once he respawns. They double kill him in stage. Big cookie dodge. Oh my God, the spear on top. Balrogs, that was nuts. I mean, he's got fast feet. In comes Robo Z. They get the sun on one. They're looking for the kills, but the Aether Remnant does it connect. No, he's not even going to attempt the yeet. But that was, uh, I mean, he just broke some ankles on the Sexy Yoke. Holy damn. Yeah, now there are two options for Jeep Ride. Either Tide, like, steals some farm from Barok, they he farms Barok's side of the map, or he TP stop and sit on the tower, especially because it's gonna be the 10 minute catapult, and I strongly believe he should be doing that. Protect the tower, protect the jungle for Sniper to farm better, because Tidehunter are so strong, they could defend that tower. I'm not sure why they're not doing that right now. Uh, defending the uh, tower uh, doesn't care too much. No, cares about one measly tower. Currently, they are looking for that fight, Balrogs, in the top lane. Kara hasn't really been part of many engagements, though that Hoodwink snipe gets the break in. Means he does not have himself the save, and that's a big catch. They're finding some crucial kills here with Robozy top net worth right now. Of course, Burna Burna on the Dusa second. And now, because of those double deaths that he had, dropped significantly in the net worth charts. Of course, it's now done with the Milstrom, so now he can really start farming. Radiant have fortified their structures. Yeah, and he still has all his farm protected, even though with Tide dying and he doesn't have a TP to go back to the tower. Barox didn't take any towers, so. Now he can really, really scale on that game, but I don't know. I think they should be able to defend that tower, like get a Ravage there and come back on the fight, but Tide just died. I think it was like, you just sit under the tower as a Tide. You don't need to go that far away. You stay with us closer to you. They were 10-2 ahead, by the way, on Deep Ride, and right now, Balrogs, they're up on towards 8 kills, 1k net with advantage, very early in the game. Feels like they uh, have so many more ways of fighting early with their rotating supports. And uh, what we've seen from Jeep Pride so far. I mean, the laning stage went super for Jeep Pride, the top lane specifically. After that, the engagements they tried to set up have been uh, pretty problematic to try and win. And even though Robo Z, like, the Batrider has traveled, but seems like Robo Z is one step ahead. So he goes to gank top, and all the time, like Batrider just used travel on another lane, and he cannot join that fight. So Tao, he shouldn't be so greedy with that travel. He should just save to TP top when there is one aggression from the Void Spirit. He could have saved Sniper twice, but he had the TP on cooldown. Now he does have it. So I'm looking forward to see what he can do. Other fight top seems to be imminent. Both sides sending out their mid laners. Bat Rider does, of course, have himself the bots going for the BKB next. They can run in the fight, pick someone up, and run out without any harm. Because honestly, they have, except for the Deuce's ulti, nothing that they can do against the B. Oh, the smoke. 
Use my break. Oh, that's a nice little easy pickup on the snap fire. Robo is he? Right now, he's in the position where he just wants kills to supplement his farm and just let the deuce up. Free farm in the meantime. That he gets gigantic. Yeah, the question is. How nice is this trading farm? Because Sniper is also free farming, and I feel like because he they got sexy Yogi. That's a nice catch. Quick lasso kill secured, of course. Take quite some time until lasso's back up. That immediately sends Balrog towards the top lane to get that tier one tower, which they still have not managed to secure. I mean, that is one problem. Without the do side, they have no tower push. Yeah, and Ty just DP mid, but then he smoked to come back to the tower, and they might get a good team fight. Okay, a uh, little bit whiffed everything, didn't throw out the shards, back and runs forward. Does get controlled up, does have the arena as well, in comes the jump, big stomp on top, Earth Splitter as well, Batrider and Kara both getting dragged back, take a lot of damage, War Points, Draken's almost dead, still trying to stay alive, but eventually does get taken down, Sexy Yogi. Noble fight on the left side. Dusa ulti comes charging and tries to keep Robosi alive and just barely saves his teammate's life with that stone gaze stun. Now on the run in the trees. Hoodwing does have himself a bushwhack. Can he get the connections? Random shot. Tao gets hit. Tao is low. Tao gets taken down and Dismar is going to be next to follow suit. In from behind comes the charge. Now trying to take the fight on the sniper. This is what, perfect for him. He just takes some right click pumps from miles away. And Balrog's trying to run back to safety. Oh, war is point for Genic. Just interrupting the TP as well. A burnout wanted to set in. That's a huge kill. The Deuce that came in to save his teammate's life does keep the Void Spirit alive, but eventually does, of course, lose his life afterwards, which is uh, honestly problematic. I'd say it's a good trade-off for G Pride, but the net worth goes towards Baroque's direction because they took the tower. So not much changes even though the sniper is alive and Dusa died. Dusa is still the same farm as Sniper. And it's interesting that Drakel he went for that Hood of Defiance and made him tank so many spells. Which a fight that should be very bad for them turned well because he could tank so much spells and Get the arena in the team fight. It's a very brawly game so far. This is uh, the kind that I love to see. The old South American experience. Where it's just a lot of aggression between two teams. Of course, you know, there's all, always different versions. You can also watch the Deuce just farm to the late game and then that. But who wants to see that, Astini? Yeah, not even Berna Berna. He wanted to fight. He popped that Oot to save the Void Spirit, which was amazing save. But then he just dove in between the tier 1 and tier 2 tower without ultimate. He put himself in so much danger. Kind of assuming he would die afterwards, but trying to take the most before it. And the net width between the top two cores is neck on neck. Just a couple of gold between them which is pretty impressive because the sniper dropped significantly after that laning stage after his two deaths came through okay fight came in the uh, arena did not get any catches so no harm no foul but yeah it, it's pretty impressive of course sniper does have a reasonable innate farming tool with the shrapnel but uh keeping up with the dusa that went for manta cell first is no easy feat yeah, usually what we see on Dusa games, like Dusa sitting on the very top of net worth, but the cars that goes with her usually are down because of that. But this is like atypical because Void Spirit has more farm than Bat Rider, also Mars has more farm than Tide. So it's really rare that we see a team split so many resources when they have Dusa. Bar so good looking at the balrog side in terms of uh all well, the composition and the farm that they have though Janet gets a catch on sexy yogi bat riders are nearby as well 
actually yeets him over the ice shards block and sexy yogi he's gonna get away thanks to the big spear from draken he actually saved the elder titan by hitting him with that lane break to toss him over the ice shards block that is so sad straight up sad unfortunate yeah i mean i want to say unfortunate but that's just sad it's like the old classic you know uh torrent spear mars uh, from mars over the arena wall like old raquel so close every single time maybe if he trusted his guts a little bit more and opened the arena then he would have the bat oh uh, she probably they want to fight here got that shadow blade the dyers Draken wants to take a fight, but there's an entire smoked dire team right behind him. Gets the arena jump in, but the snowball save! Immediate ravage, Mars, he is stuck. And that was huge from Jennick, making sure now it doesn't take any damage chase from Robo Z. Doesn't get the cash because the Shadow Blade keeps him alive. This is turning out pretty well, though one for one trade. Burner Burner charging in. Medusa ulti already used. Buyback as well coming through. They're going to go for the Medusa. On the run, Stomp will at least keep them now out of the fight, but Jennick is nearby. No ice is blocked for quite some time. Earthsplitter doesn't really connect. And Burna Burna, he's out of mana. He's in trouble. He's taking a beating. Burna Burna, cookie stun. Burna Burna. Will he finally get taken down? He's still staying. He's still standing. He's still surviving. He, he's turning it around. Oh my god, eventually does get taken down by now. Who's going to get caught by the eighth remnant? The double damage. Robo Z just jumping in the fight. Everyone. On the side of G Pride, tried to take down that Dusa. Did if I see take him down, but it cost them a massive amount of losses. Yeah, the sniper he was already in this, and he sees Dusa with like 80 HP, and it's like, okay, we go down together. You go down first, so I'm fine with that trade. But very well team fight. Robo Z is doing so much with that Void Spirit, and now has Arcane Rune, so. He can get more kills, he can keep snowballing the map. The cooldown of Arena is just going to be back in 10 seconds. And Tidehunter needs more 1 minute for the Ravage. Oh, Draken. Drag back. This Mark Cookie Stun. Shotgun Blast. Draken going to get caught out top lane. But yeah, that fight was... Um, the fight bottom was really just... One absolutely massive play from Robo Z. It, the entirety of G Pride were just only trying to kill off the Dusa because they know, of course, big core, most important one. But Robo Z jumped into the fight, blew all of his spells to try and catch the sniper, which he completely whiffed. Sniper, of course, as you mentioned, popped his shadow blade, ran away, vanished. And then in that moment where the Dusa charged in and they all turned their attention to Dusa, Robo Z just waited for his to come back. And with that double damage, just came back jumping into the fight. They had no idea that so much damage would come through from a double damage voice bear. It was very yeah, close to Zax. It's very clever from Berna Berna what he's doing to join fights. Because usually you see a Dusa and you feel like, okay, if we kill her, the team fight is over. Because you have that feeling that everything's concentrated on the Dusa, but that's not the case. The voice spirit is doing so much. He's having such a good game that. You can't ignore everyone and try to kill that Dusa that you you know you can because it's still early game. She doesn't have the... Oh, she's gonna buy this Scotty right now and then it gets harder. So, G Pride, they feel like, okay, we have good team fights because we are killing Dusa, but it's not good because the other two cars, they're just farming more. Okay, I'm coming in. Five Balrogs. Whereas looking to try and take down Roshan if they get a decent fight. Woodwink is going for a Aetherlands into Ags run. It's been a while since I've seen the Ags on Hoodwink. Burna Burna, Snowball gonna charge up towards him and they're gonna make sure that the Tusk dies first. Get him out of the fight because that's a kill that won't result in a buyback. Here comes the snipe from the Hoodwink, break effect onto the Tide Hunter. Into the arena. Tide's in trouble. Does have a Ravage, but really doesn't want to blow it. And Sexy Yogi gets a second kill for the... That is, uh... Balrog's nice catch with that smoke. Definitely worthwhile. However, kind of need to make sure that you get an objective out of a smoke gang. That's exactly what they're trying to do, though. It's not going to be an easy affair, because they're... Uh, pesky Batrider in the vicinity. Dyer's middle tower is under 
Yeah, but that's the team fight that I feel like Deep Riot cannot win. That's the timing of Dusa. She has this Kadi. You just kite her. So as soon as Tusk break the smoke, I think they just could all be back. Even maybe without using Sniper first BKB. But they lost the Tusk, they lost the Tide, they lost that BKB charge. And they really want to fight into that Dusa with Skadi, which is a fight that um, I doubt they can win. Okay, Dusa ulti into the lasso. Guy in enemy lines though, Dusa is out of mana, does have a 20 magic wand charge, but still gonna get stunned up thanks to the Ravage. Find a big kill, Robo Z on the run, but both safe lanes got taken now. Dismar in the top side, as the cookie sprint in the opposite direction. This Elder Titan does 380 auto attack damage because of that buff. Oh my god, I love Elder Titans. Always a scary bunch. And they're just gonna just her own trade and Ravage, Lasso used. And they still have the arena on Barrock side. So as soon as Dusa is back, they can just go Roche. Or was Roche? Well, nowhere. <laughs> Still back to full HP. There's trying to find a catch here. In comes the snipe. Gonna be able to connect. Oh, just barely missed the Tide Hunter. A lot of just barely whiffed spells on both sides right now. Spear miss, snipe miss, pushback miss. Everything a miss, miss. Uh, so now there is one minute window to the Roche without Ravage. I don't know if G Pride they're gonna try to delay Roche or just accept that Barok is having it and try to split lanes uh, so the Dusa with Aegis cannot just run into them. Robo Z, Ags, completed, going for the BKB next. It's gonna be pretty annoying, especially for the Tusk to deal with, because Tusk kind of is the savior if you get him silenced in the back line. Problem if you silence the sniper, it doesn't really matter that much. Sniper also has that BKB now done. Gonna go for the uh, MKB next after his Silver Edge. Okay, BKB Milstrom, Silver Edge, not too bad. Dusa only have that, of course, level 10 talent for evasion. But MKB just hurts like crazy anyway. Yeah, there's this <coughs> talent of 15 evasion on Dusa side. I bet she might want to go for a butterfly if you don't go for that item. Does a lot of damage. I actually missed my mute button. <laughs> so it's like, ah, oh, quickly mute before I have to sneeze. Oh, rip. <laughs> Sorry, okay. everyone at home. Dyer's middle tower is under they just heard me sneak. Pretty loud. Oh well. Right now. Yeah, I believe in the Balrog's dream. You know, I said it from the start. The boys. I mean, to be fair, both these old teams that came from the Opa Qualifiers are team. Right? Balrogs and yeah. Wolf Team. Like, both of them are, like, Division 1 squads. It's already a big surprise to me that they lost by the Wolf team their first game, but they're going to be playing, I think, against Omega after this. See if exactly. uh, they'll get ba themselves back in action. And of course, that is uh, Brazil coming in after this. Brazil against Bolivia. Omega, they, one of the few teams that are not from Peru or Brazil. That is... Uh, Oh, that's actually pretty impressive. Because, yeah, as you said, most teams Peruvian or Brazilian. But, of course, every once in a while, a pl one player from a different region. But, uh, all team. And we'll be looking forward to see if Lee Sachs, the offlaner of Omega Gaming, is, like, the new offlaner we're waiting for because, like, on Bolivia, it's where the good offlaners are born, you know? So, Biscos, Peruvian team, even though they go for Whisper, Bolivia. Thunder Predator, even though entire Peruvian team, they go for Oscar, Bolivian, so, yeah. Yes, uh, some regions have their specialty. 
Like China has mid laners that are just amazing. And then they always had just some very good safe laners, but be a little bit of a lacking result in that regard. Whereas I think Southeast Asia, for instance, they're like really good in their supports. Yeah, DJ. DJ, Tim's, oh my god. So charge coming in, Burna Burna with the BKB, and Dusa Alti looking for Tao, Cookie does he get himself away, the snap the uh, Batrider will be found out, that's gonna be a 3 for 0 trade, with even a buyback on the tide forced out, and that's just gonna be a free rush. Yeah. Not only a free rush, it's a free rush with bonus. That That's the thing about Dusa that I feel some things like to understand. You don't want to fight on that timing. She has Kadi, she has BKB. Like, you're not gonna win the fight and still Aegis. You just need to accept. She's gonna have the Aegis. And if they accept, they're not giving that bonus, which is a Batrider kill, a Tusk kill, a kill on Tide with a buyback. And you just dodge that timing to have enough items to deal with her. And till they have that MKB on Sniper, till they even have like that Refresher on Tidehunter, they cannot fight her. And Tidehunter, he had the gold for the refresher actually, but he bought back that gold. That is uh, pretty unfortunate. Having a refresher would be definitely nice. Instead, to go for the Aeon disc on a Tidehunter? I mean, I get it because, of course, he's getting hit by that uh, Hoodwink sharpshooter every single time, breaks him, and at that point. Sitting duck gets stunned up and he's dead, but on a tide hunter going for an A on this, that's just weird and sad. Very yeah. sad that you. I think with BKB he would be safe. Also, not an oh. item you want to buy on tide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely no. You don't want to buy anything defensive. I, I, I get this point, or. Let's say the last des defensive would be like a Shiva's that you get some extra armor and you can survive because of that. But... Yeah. I'd still, if I feel like I'm dying, I would go for a BKB instead of Aeon Disc. Nice guys there from Draken. Went for the shard. I really personally think that the Mars shard is very underrated. Even though I hear from a lot of people that they don't like the Mars shard, I think it's so frick. I mean, it, it's not always that you hit that two-man stun, but if you got the level 20 talent, that's a 3.6 second stun on two people, possibly, inside the arena. And it's just instantaneous GG. Yeah, and that's what his team needs, right? He needs to control heroes that Dusa can hit them and kill them. So having that extra control on one hero and keeping them together because there's going to be the split shot, super good decision. Well, the farming is uh, continuing up, and it's a 4k net with lead for the deuce, a 12k for the Balrogs. It's not insurmountable, and pushing high ground is still problematic against the Sniper, though Sniper doesn't have, like, a uh, Dragon Lance or something, so he doesn't have that extra range, which he already stup has stupid levels of range. But that extra range to make sure that they can't ever hit your high ground. But he's very close to finishing up the MPKB afterwards, wants to go for the Ayaskadi, uh, trying to... Pop shot the deuce at the entire time. Yeah, I want. What they have to save the high grounds, like having the bat with the lasso, you're always scared to go into that high ground, but he didn't go for the dagger. He has lands and a plate mail. I never I get do bat right that. Don't get. Like. Yeah, perfect. Drag him back. Behind enemy lines. The problem is he's got Aegis, so the arena comes out from Draken. He gets himself a big stun onto Jennic. One for one trade. Buyback comes through. Oh, look at that sexy Yogi running in. 400 auto attack damage. Thanks to his freaking Astral Spirit. Is gonna die though. But he just almost smacked the Tide Hunter. Ravage gets blown on towards the Dusa. It's still a pretty tanky Dusa though. With the beacon be available. It's a remnant. Oh, Robo Z just doing all the damage. This more taking out. Kara in trouble. That's gonna be a dieback on the Tide. Double kill. 
And now on the high ground, won't get stunned up just yet. Draken's trying to get the kill, now he's staying alive. He's still pumping away, but with that snowball chase in, Draken does get the smack, finds the sniper, and Burna, Burna through all of that, just staying AFK, well, AFK, he's just right-clicking away. His opponents get taken down buyback from the snap fire. The bat rider in the tree, still alive. They're gonna go for the Dusa. Does almost get taken down. Tao loses his life. Dismar, he guesses incorrectly, and the Dusa gets the rampage! What a massively weird play coming through. The Dusa gets the rampage. What just happened? That fight lasted way too long, Astini. For a while, I thought Dusa would die now. Uh... But that fire doesn't have any damage at all to do to Dusa. Well, it started very well by G-Pride by isolating the Dusa, taking the first life. But yeah, they just outplayed on Barox afterwards with the Arena from Mars. Very nice jump from Drakel there, protecting the Dusa second life. And Dusa still had like BKB ulti, so G-Pride, they still went all, all in on that. Maybe if they had one extra buyback, and then I come back to what I said like on 20 minutes that you cannot fight when Dusa wants to do Roche, you can just allow her to take Aegis. If they had the tight buyback, this team fight could have went like the totally different. Or way. the tide, you know, refresher. Like yeah. he had double ravage, their fight just completely turned around. Yeah. Either of those, and I feel that when teams understand that, they will improve so much. If you understand, you are not forced to fight all the time. You can just decide, okay, we don't fight now, we fight when we get that refresher ready. And that would have made a different, a huge difference. And now you've got a tide with an A on this, which I, granted it keeps your life a little bit longer, but... You know, it's not an item you ever want to see. Yeah. I do want to see but that like, blink on the bat, though. It's 2.5 seconds that you are alive, but all the three cores on Barok's side, they have BKB, and Sexy Yogi is gonna have that Agonies. So, when you are under A on this, they'll just, like, pop BKB. So, you still die without popping Ravage. Or you use Ravage and you just get one hero. So that's why I don't see so much sense into buying an AMD on a Tidehunter. I, I don't see value on that item for that hero. And right now, 20k net with this advantage. High ground lost two sets of racks. They kinda can't get any map Little control. Treasures. Bounty. I mean, that last fight, it was also the sniper was only like 200 gold away from a buyback. So, in that situation, the sniper has just that little bit more gold, gets the buyback. They can win it on the side of G-Pride. Because we saw the Dusa almost dead as well. It's just, you mentioned it, it's the very small, minor details that they just can't take the advantage going in their favor. Though, catch onto the Mars. Pops his arena. He's just gonna walk away with the BKB usage though. It did use his arena, so that's gonna be on cooldown for quite some time. Yeah. Like to initiate heroes with the Tusk Punch because you can just then BKB TP and you definitely do not want to use the lasso to cancel it. But well, they force BKB, they force Arena. Fine. They gain like one more minute to farm. Yeah, but the problem is the second Roche would be absolutely deadly if uh, Balrogs pick it up with an Aegis and a Shard. The free Shard said definitely no issue to pick up. Let's see, who would want the free Shard? Oh. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Mm. This, this Maybe uh, ET because he's close to the Agonies. I think his shard with the Agonies makes a lot of sense. I mean, it is pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen the Elder Titan shard being used. Which is surprising, because it, to me, it sounds like an amazing shard. It's like a free, you know, like um, the Aghanim Scepter effect of TA. Kind of a free teleport. Yeah, you have like BKB Dagger with Agonies and Agony Shard. 
And if you have BKB dagger, you just punch three times sniper's face and you can kill him. That sounds perfect. Get it. Do it. I, I though it's probably I gonna mean, go to the Dusa regardless. Yeah. Yeah, it's free. Free mana. No, he's the safe laner, so you got it. Support him. <laughs> it's just the cool side of theory crafting, you know? How nice it would be to have supports with items, but we are not gonna see it, so we just enjoy the theory of how nice it would be. I always just dislike the hoodwink song, actually. Even though I know it's actually really good, I just... It feels so disappointing most of the time. Lasso drag onto the void. Ravage gets blown, but wasted completely. And he doesn't have a refresher. So that's out of the fight. Jennick is already dead. The snipe onto the snap fire. Chasing for more now. Going for the TP away. He does manage to disengage Bakara. Well, that's going to be his other buyback used. He's going to be even further away from that refresher. Even though buybacking doesn't really do anything because he doesn't have Ravage for 125 seconds. The entire reason you've got the hero is boot at the moment. But in one and a half minutes, he's gonna have the disc. This was a bad joke. Oh no, it, it, you are correct in that regard, though. Cash comes out onto now. Nice catch, make that a double. No, and Tau no more. And so far, the sniper safe lane was not successful. Balrogs take the first map after the GG calls. And an absolutely stellar performance coming out from them. I mean, I just gotta say, I accidentally eaten. Haha, <laughs> misclick. I just gotta say that uh, I've been pretty impressed with Balrogs' performance. The question is, can they, of course, bring that to game number two? Because that early game, Zexa, he was 0 6 1 at seven minutes. He ends the game 3 7. Yeah, they had impressive decision making in that mid game. And that's what made the difference. Even, let's say, Gorilla Sprite outplayed them on the lane phase or just had better heroes to play the lane phase. Uh, had so many kills, they just took better decisions. Berna Berna joining fights with Dusa very early in the game, something very atypical to see, but it worked out very well. So it seems like Barrogs, they have that extra experience that we were expecting them to have. And they were able to outplay Gorilla Sprite. And even though Gorilla Sprite, in my opinion, had a good hard carry matchup. I trust the sniper, but yeah. Yeah, I, I trust the sniper, didn't. but I didn't trust the team behind it. Like, it's a pretty good team if you take quick Roshan and get super aggressive. But when you come down to a team fight, Dusa plus Elder Titan plus Mars Arena, you're asking for trouble in the, the mid to late game at that point. And the tide just had... I mean, you had one very good Ravage, but... You know, item builds up, build ups, no play. Bat Rider, it did catch them off guard a couple of times, but uh, after the laning stage, that did feel like Balrogs were. Well, of course, that was only game number one in this series, and even after this series, there's another series waiting for us. There's plenty of Dota action to witness right back after a short break for that second map to be. Guys, that.
Welcome back, ladies Please and gentlemen, to the DPC South American Division 2 Winter Tournament, a.k.a. the first run of DPC this year. My name is Nika Truman, and joining me is the South America himself, Estini. Well, a quick recap about that first game and your predictions on the second. So, first game, we see Sniper last pick against Duza. He could not... Uh... He cannot defend the base against that Dusa push with Aegis, and that was a very good game for Dusa. Even though Gorilla Sprite, they had an amazing lane phase Five with that sniper pick uh, with the Bat Rider. So Barogs seems to be the team having the best decisions in the game. Although Gorilla Sprite, they are very skilled players, and if they manage maybe to pick a snowball draft themselves where they win the lanes and keep the pace, they might be able to win this one. Well, uh, currently we do get to see some heroes being picked up. Ten one very seconds. crucial pickup is, of course, the Weaver that was left through. Five We've seen uh, Weaver pretty much always get banned every single game this time. Balrogs do manage to pick it up, but there's no Dusa, so they're going to go for pretty much something that is very similar, but yet very different to the Dusa, the Terror Boy. <laughs> Yeah, also, same approach, where you pick your win condition on your second pick, and then you're gonna have the tools to make seconds. this hero win the game. Die Maybe again game. have a strong position 5 laner as the other titan. Maybe go with an ogre. And they have the weaver, which is something that really allows that win condition that they pick. Uh, so Dusa or TB now to do the siege damage because once you have that agonies on weaver you're just gonna have the tb right clicking buildings with the weaver standing on the cover so it's pretty decent to have that mars where you can pop the arena and somehow split that team fight leave the weaver out or go try to burst the weaver also a pretty default answer to the weaver is going bane because basically weaver has no stun so she can't cancel your ultimate that's uh, pretty annoying in that regard. Of course, there's always that threat of uh, you trying to stand high ground with the TB and you get speared it out of reach of the Weaver. But seconds. the most important thing is, of course, this, as you said, the save on the TB. And in case it Five still goes wrong, you always have the Sunder. So TB, pretty tanky and survivable in that regard. On the other side, we do have Mars Snapfire combo. A lot of damage to come through, of course. And the Bane is very nasty, but the Oracle, they went for everything in the saving basket. Weaver with, of course, his ulti. Oracle with his ulti to interrupt the Bane Bean's grip. And that is, uh, that's actually pretty huge. This Bane is, it's looking a lot more like he's got no game. Ten seconds. Yeah, but if you go all in on that save, then you're gonna Five lack seconds. catch and lack stuns. And that allows Gorilla Sprite to pick like a spirit here. Or Puck, Puck, Void Spirit, Storm, so strong now that they don't have stuns. Okay, they get the Void Spirit themselves, so they will not play against a Void Spirit, but they might play against an Ember and Puck and Storm Spirit, which is gonna have a very strong game because how do you catch this hero to kill him? To yeah, Ember. A battle between the spirits, of course, magic damage is the sublime against a Terror Blade. Because well, he does have the highest armor gain in the entire freaking game. So he's uh, a tanky boy in that regard. Magic damage always, or pure damage is always the way to go in that regard. Void Ten Spirit seconds. versus Ember Spirit matchup. They both kind of negate a part of each other. One has a magic damage reduction, uh, magic absorption shield. The other a physical. And honestly, in the, that matchup, it's very much just outplay each other. I mean, there's definitely kill potential, without a doubt. But uh, between all spirits, it is just who's better out at outplaying Ten their seconds. opponents. And I would say it's a very close 50-50. Normally. Turn to yeah, but you have the grip, you have the spear, arena, you have ways to deal with the void spirit on Gorilla Sprite side, but on Barok side, you don't have ways to deal with the Ember Spirit. So especially if he controls the power up rune, he can do so much on this game. And that's the band they really needed to do, which is Ten Legion. Seconds. It's more safe to the TB and also 
uh, that's some catch. That's a way of holding that Amber Spirit on one place and killing him. And they don't have many options to have that control, that stun, that would allow the TB to actually do damage on the team fight. They have like Centaur open, but you don't want to pick it against Mars. Radiant pick. And yeah, with the Blood Seeker ban, of course, Fangolier was going to be banned. I'm not sure if they were baiting it. They have Sand King, but I don't see... I mean, if you pick Sand King, the enemy picks like an ad. Yeah, and there's Morphling open still. I I'm not sure if now seconds. plays Morphling, but it looks like such an amazing Morphling game that you Five just like enter on that back line, you kill the Oracle, you kill the Weaver. There's also like Spectre, that is like a hero that you just kill Oracle and Weaver the entire game. I like Jeep Ride draft with what I see but again Barrox is the best team so it's it's great to see G Pride having a lead on draft so we expect a, a good game here. And especially of course they need an off lane for Balrogs. Probably an off lane you could still swap things with off lane but for the most part you expect an off lane on their part and Gorilla's Pride can choose their safe laner accordingly to try and uh, have a decent enough laning state not be too problematic but you're gonna kind of look like uh you need a safe laner that can handle the tb there aren't most that can handle the tb uh you could go for another illusion based hero yes pl is banned but i'm thinking naga for some reason i don't know why i'm thinking naga i just makes sense this doesn't get up enough i mean the th just to get, you know, the Song of the Sign, walk up towards the Oracle, smack him, and then uh, kill the TB. Dire pick. Something more active in that regard. Doom is pretty nice, especially if the enemy wants to go for, like, a Morphling. It's not the end for Morphling. I mean, if you can almost always see the Doom come, a, There's come monkey. in time. There's, like, a less big monkey that you just could straight up counter the Doom, and... Ten seconds. Again, they have no catch, and... Monkey is not a spirit, but you just Five jumping trees left. and there's only voice spirit that can reach you. Even the morph against Doom, I would be fine. I I don't like Barox draft. They don't have clear wave, so any illusion based hero is super good. And they don't have reliable stuns, so any hero in the game is good. No kidding. Any elusive hero like as Morphling, uh, as the Ember Spirit they already have. Uh what other options they flame I mean something uh, weird uh, pull, pull out your weird predictions here because they went for a sniper last game so it wouldn't surprise the me if they weird win. the weird would be CK let's go again CK. it's like it's like units and has life steal against the doom that would be the weird one Our the Warden. common one nah I mean it's fun they pushed games forever uh Naga, I, I think he will lag like frontline if he goes Arc Warden. I still think draft. with a the Naga, they have no way of clear. Yeah. It, it's super good for Naga. Good for CK. Good for Monkey King. Good for Morphling. They have so many options. It's really hard to pull like the prediction here. I would go for Monkey if it was me. Because you also have like very good Roche team fight together with the Arena. You don't care getting doomed at all. Choose your hero. Wait, oh, or you go for the Ursa, so one that we completely did, uh, picked yeah. out there. It, I mean, it's fine. It, it's yeah. okay. It's definitely a hero in this game that can easily be kited. Uh, like, you can't. You're gonna need to really rely on your teammates to. Old Weaver in place, the Oracle in place, Void Spirit in place. They're pretty elusive here. Well, the Oracle not so much, but Oracle has, of course, that false promise. But then the big question is going to be, is this going to be a... Def going to get to see, like, more some uh, Battle Fury Chanel. I think Diffuso, because that's the approach they need. They need some snowballing. They can't let, like, that... Doom get items and the TB get items, so they need to play some snowball draft. And Ursa can definitely do that with the early Diffuso, going for the early Roche. And 
it's nice to play Ursa when they have a lot of those covers, because, like, Weaver is saving and Oracle is saving, but you're just, like, creating first swipe stacks, so, like, you are one hit to kill the TB, and he sunders you, and then you are just, like, two hits to killing him because you have, like, ten first swipe stacks, and, like, if Weaver uses uh, time lapse, you just kill on the next uh, hit. Same goes like Oracle, he ultimates and you're just like creating first swipe sex. So, seems great, seems great. You have a decent amount to try and clear out the illusions uh, with the Ember Spirit. It also depends completely on his build. He's definitely looking to go for like a Milstrom kind of ordeal. I mean, just the Milstrom light of fist kills off the randomly walking nearby. That should in all sense be a-okay, but uh, yeah. You're gonna go with G-Pride, I assume? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I just, I, you know, I'm a big fan of the Balrogs right now. I'm gonna go with Balrogs, I'm just gonna say their sheer, their, their Terror Blade is gonna be so fat that Gorilla's Pride with all their stuns and roots and whatnot that they have can't <laughs> lock him down. really can see that happening. I definitely can see that happening. I, I'm just like an uh, enthusiast for the underdog. And, I know you started um, it at the beginning. But I'm like, yeah. nah, the, the open qualifier team's going to end 1-2. Actually, no. Yeah. Interitus was actually really impressive as well. But then they lost to Infinity, which arguably can be like a Division 1 team also. They oh, just yeah. dropped Infinity from the first well. division, and they have players that were in the first division. They have Mariano. They, they have the P team. I don't know why Papita chose to be called Mariano, because then they would have Parker, PP, Pamplona, Prada, Papita, which would sound nicer. I always get confused by people. Wait, Mariano was Papita? Really? I did. Yeah. Oh my god. I casted their game, and <laughs> I did not have a single clue. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I honestly, from Infinity, Interdus was very impressive, but Team Infinity, uh, their mid laner, PP, I think it, he was to climb how incredibly well he played. So, you know, th there's some really good teams in South. As you said, I mean, I expect kind of the two open qualify teams to make it, but Infinity is also another team that has been very impressive. And South America is actually very... This reward. 30 seconds to Tough to even try and survive in that region right now to live to fight because of course last two places get eliminated for the next EPC have to play through opens again and honestly for the teams that are not amongst those three it's going to be pretty tough yeah and it's good to see that's like leveled up on top it's not like leveled up because both like all teams are bad no all teams are good it's Great Dota to watch, so okay. I'm glad to see our regions getting better. And like this guy you mentioned, PP, everyone in Brazil became a huge fan of him because actually they had a Infinity had one Brazilian in the team, which was Arms. So everyone was watching their matches and cheering for them, and everyone was impressed with PP when he was on second division. Then they got promoted to first division. They kicked Arms, and they. Are back to second division but <laughs> it's a guy to definitely watch if he's pretty impressive and also his name is just funny <laughs> uh but that's stupid right now though draken taking a lot of damage the right clicks from the ursa classic bully strats because like Barrocks, we know the five names, they are like strong players in the region. They are definitely players that we look and we are like, okay, they belong to first division. But it's interesting to see that we have those players like to watch, that we expect them to like rise and shine during the season and that they become great players such as PP. And I believe now that this hard carry from G Pride is one guy to watch, that he's gonna improve a lot. and. Show very good Dota. There, I mean, for instance, on Balrog's side, Draken has been one of the most impressive players I've seen. Janek, uh, five position. He pried his Tusk game uh, last game. Very good saves, early game. 
dominated as well. Definitely a couple of players that I'm uh, pressed in watching so far and hope to get more of in this DPC. I believe all players from Balrog, they're just impressive. Uh, when I saw that far against five game, then I'm like, okay, they're all... Even Robo Z disconnected is super great. And again, Trouble does have himself a nightmare to try and stay alive from the Weaver. And go, Nightmare. Holds him in place. Wants now to jump on him, but right now, now doesn't want to do that. And that means Janik is going to get first blooded. And the kill given to Draken, who gets that first blood secured. So, uh, Balrog started off with a very lengthy fight in the top lane. Denied. Yeah, that's the thing of the Weaver for such a strong lane. You can pick any offlaner and expect at least not to lose your lane. Getting first blood, of course, super great. But when you're a Doom, you're kind of fine with losing the lane because you're going to farm more with the Devourer. You're going to have more net worth even you're losing your lane. So getting first blood on that lane, super good start for Balrogs. But who wins a lane against a four Weaver? Like what five position is amazing against a Weaver? I mean, I tried Silencer, but Silencer only works until level six and then like Silencer is useless. <laughs> I don't think there's any. I'd say Bane is one of the best ones. <laughs> oh my lord, Weaver survives with almost no HP. That means the Bane's gonna take some time because he can't TP. That means he's gonna have to take the walk of shame. Luckily enough, the Weaver has to go back to base, otherwise that Ursa would be completely destroyed right now. Yeah, uh, you definitely need to be fairly careful that top lane. Of course, last game, Balrogs got dumpstered in that regard, that area, but uh, Zexa on the Weaver is trying to make up for his very unfortunate hoodwink early game. Yeah, and the weird thing is like, when you pick a sniper, you're not expecting to win the lane, but when you're picking an Ursa, you definitely expect to win the lane. You don't jungle with that hero, so you need to be able to stay in your lane and, and scare away the offlaner, but that's not the case here. Mid matchup, pretty much as you expect from at two spirits, fairly decently close. Okay. Weaver TP's bottom, so they should go for an aggression very soon. Or they do have meta available. Kinda wanted for it to be a level two meta though, but Dismar is about to get taken down. They do lose sexy Yogye beforehand. Dismar killed off and Kara. On the sprint, does he get away? Yes, he does. Very close. Burn charge might have been a uh, kill in the coffin, but yeah. The TB really kind of wanted to wait like two more creeps because then he'd have Metamorphosis level two. But and the catapult. Yeah, and the cat. Yeah. It was just slightly off for Balrogs to take that fight. Because now yeah. he. Popped level 1 metamorphosis and because he killed someone off got level 4 he gets conjure image which honestly is not that bad but that metamorphosis level up is always very useful to have and they leave the doom top alone uh, and he was punished for that yeah you can't so, really solo lane again uh, not so sure about that move of weaver i understand she just got the Burn, you wanna get a kill with it, you wanna snowball somehow as a position for her to get that early egg, but a bit too early. Yeah, Draken, of course, uh, will continue to farm. He's going for the Hand of Midas build. I always find it very weird. You know, I, I know that he gets super fat and super farmed and whatever with Hand of Midas. I'm just not a fan of Hand of Midas in general in like 80% of the cases. <laughs> The thing is, Doom, you always go for that item because you, you just get it, fight so. every two and a half minutes. Yeah, it, it, it pretty much is exactly that. Like, on the Doom, okay, but sometimes you see a game where, like, a Slark gets it. Safe lane, and really questioning yourself why 
Why? Just why? Yeah. And like Doom, you can... You can understand that you are behind in the game, but still... Oh, they go for the Ursa. Well, he did pop us in Rage, but they just wait for it to end. Kill him off, and Robo Z gets another kill. Again, on that Void Spirit. Last game we saw him do a lot of work, this time he's gonna try and do it again. Then egg dropping low, Weaver with the bugs, gives the vision, gets the kill for Draken, and now Desmond in the tower does of course have no creeps to uh, deal with, so that Doom has to walk away for a second. Can't really fully engage in that regard, but he's getting some decent farm. That hand of mine is ain't gonna take too long on a Doom farming away. He's done. The Smackdown comes through. Did you watch which hero had the bar up room? It was Robo Z? Um, Sexy. Yogi had a haste room. Ah, okay. Because it's weird to see the Void Spirit making the first move and not Amber. I would just expect Amber to be a little bit ahead. Oh, Doom on to the Ember, and that is Tau. Easily picked off. With, of course, the rune spawning right now. Bottom double damage. Oh, Robo Z is going to be a pretty happy Void Spirit. Yeah, he can go for that Ursa kill again. If now doesn't play safe, has a good ward. Did Jenna can trouble the Bane? Frank stay alive. Actually, survives for a bit longer, but level two resonant pulse is enough. Actually, it's Sexy Yogi that steals the kill. Okay. Pretty Oracle. Currently a 2k net with lead and 8 minute game while your Terrorblade's not rush. even top 3. This is actually Radiant pretty sneaky but look at the high ground. They do have That's an scary. I'm not sure if they can do that even with a minus armor. Okay they can. Yeah, they're not expecting it. They do have high ground ward on the Radiant side which they just placed. But they don't know. Weaver, is he gonna scout out the pit? Oh, he's walking towards it, but Rose just dies. He walks in. No cookie stun available. Actually, they didn't have the Mind's Armor. Snapfire didn't even have Lil Shredder. Yeah, <laughs> just use Scatter Blast. Bottom tower is under attack. Kinda weird. Oh, Bane. I mean, they do have that Aegis, but the rest are ro rotating in to take a fight. Or are you just planning to give away a free Aegis? Yeah, I believe Robo Z could have killed Ursa, but... Basically. Maybe he didn't. Yeah, yeah. Not worth dying here, already sitting with three kills. I mean, Ursa is still second in net worth. He started his lane off pretty tough, but of course, since that Weaver TP towards the bottom lane, it's been kind of a free lane top against the solo do. Yeah, and Ursa is one hero that loves that one versus one situation. And he's gonna go for the kill on Drakal. Uh, he's uh, a oh. bit of pickle. It's gonna be that Diffusal Blade Ursa, but Drakal is not gonna be chased in the free lane. BB still trying to uh, get back on that decent farm range himself. Hey, he didn't have like the most superb lane, but he didn't have a bad lane either. No, he doesn't have anything like stacks or anything. Radiant's middle tower is not even worse. Doom seeding his farm. <laughs> he doesn't have meta also now to farm the possible stack he could have so I think he's gonna pop the next meta to take the top tower that's where everyone is heading to and Robo Z has one haste run so he can connect very very fast Never refuse gold given. he's also going for Yules of course very useful this game you did mention it the Ember Spirit's hard to catch and well if you hit him with an Yules into Aether Remnant be an easy pick on towards the Ember Spirit to uh, try and get some control going yeah, they definitely need multiple ways. <laughs> like, they're going to need an Void Spirit Axe this game as well, just to try and get... And even the Bane under control. Okay, now. Top lane. Want to actually take a fight. Bane's almost level 6, so you have that Fiend's Grip possibility. 
But on the other side, of course, Oracle's nearby, so Fiend's Crypt doesn't really do anything as false promises on the map. Baiting on the other side is wild, doing damage on the mid tower. It was clever from G-Pride, but Kara is gonna pay the price. And I popped, and uh, continues to use farming, maybe attempt to take the mid tier one tower. He should, he can do some damage. Not sure if they should all in, but yeah, and they have the haste room and illusion room afterwards. Oh, so Ursa TP's in aggressively, all the way in the front, so they're spooked. Got his defusal blade done in 13 gold. So he should be, uh, Pretty much that Diffusal Blade should be go time, because if you take this game longer and longer and longer, Balrogs are getting way too strong at once. Like, currently Weaver doesn't have squat, but if he gets himself that spared vessel and, well, the Ags, you know, after 20 minutes, then this game becomes incredibly hard to take down the TB. Pros and cons on doing such an early rush is that he has just Aegis for one more minute, so he really needs to fight to find that team fight on that one minute with the Diffuso. And Barok, they can kite it if they feel Back instead. like. Diffuso Blade. Actually, he misses the Diffuso Blade, but the Spear does not miss, and Draken's gonna get taken down. He actually hit the creeps with the Diffuso. <laughs> and they got the Weaver. In script. Nice catch, double kill, so they at least got something out of the ages. However, yeah. TB just surpassed him. Yeah, there's barely network change because meanwhile, Void Spirit's farming, TB's farming, and they were on a five man's mode. Use. They still have cooldowns to fight though. They have the arena with the Snapfire ultimate, so even though they use the Fiend's Grip, they can fight. They can fight. If they find one. Yeah, but I don't think with the age running out that that's their plan yet. Plus Ursa, he kind of needs to finish up his phase boots. He needs a blink dagger as well. The uh, a decent amount of items to really be able to do anything in en engagement. He got controlled up. But they have the dagger coming from Mars, so my feeling is they want to fight. Ember does have a DD as well, and knows the attempt on the Ursa. Does already pop his enrage, runs away, the spear connects onto the Doom. Being held in place, the magic reduction from Sexy Yogi. He's actually dying to the Mortimer's Kisses. Big mistake, Tao coming through with that double damage Ember. Charging into the fight, Draken dropped in low, the spear is not going to connect, but the Doom onto the Ember, that's huge. The Ember is in trouble, Tao is taken down, and they don't even lose the Doom in the process. The rest of the team now just needs to run away. But can they? Kara is on the chase. He does have a Yules to hold Kara in place though. Robo Z, does he connect it? No, he does not. Cookie gets Kara out of that is going to be a one for one trade. A bit of a mistake coming out from a sexy Yogi on that Oracle, trying to uh, help his teammates. But we all know that you should just let your teammates die. <laughs> but there, that was just a small mistake on a position fight. Meanwhile, they got the Bane. Nice uh, added catch. Burna Burna, he's still in the meta for, for a couple of seconds. Kara very low again, does get away. There you actually find a double there. Tao turning it around, looking for sexy Yogi. Does still have false promise, but doesn't really want to use it for himself. So they find three kills for that Bane takedown. And the yeah, looking pretty decent after the uh, join in on that fight. Okay, so we had two team fights. Oh, we had the third one. Sorry. Oh, Fiend's Grip. It felt like he did have a timing there to pop his disseminate after the root. Just a mini second too slow, but that is a painful death. The tier one tower mid loss. Of course, I did mention that taking down such an early Roshan is very advantageous and they can't really make that many plays. But it also does. Second Roshan with the free Aghanim shard will be up. Fairly soon, and you could even get that shard pre 20 minutes before anyone else in the game could get one. Exactly. The, I, I thought there was pros and cons, that was the pro, uh, but the game is non stop fighting, they got the TB. Oh, that is a huge one. TB, fourth in net worth right now, behind the Ursa, Ember, and his own teammate Doom. It lays Axa, another kill coming through. They're trying to find the damage. 
there's now with the bling dagger onto sexy yoga one of these days we'll see him pop a false promise but it will not be this day this game is just so hard to finish i thought because <laughs> they're fighting non-stop and finding kills everywhere they might know they don't go for the doom but yeah that's the pro that you actually get an agony shard even before the 20 minutes mark and you really want that item on Ursa build. And it's an early rush within one minute. So I'm expecting them to start scouting that area and getting it ASAP, which would allow now to really snowball on that game with that extra one second, 1.5 second in rage. is isn't killable that early in the game. And one more thing. That you mentioned very early in the game. On the ill scepter for the Void Spirit is super good against the Ursa also because it's the counter for that status resistance that it doesn't apply on ill. So when Ursa ultimates, you just use ills on her. It's also very good itemization from Robo Z. They are trying to find their opponents. Weaver still building up that spirit vessel. So, uh,. It looked like a superb early game for the Weaver. Fell flat quickly. Yeah, and when he has the vessel, he's gonna have one charge of urn, maybe. Because they're not getting that many kills, right? So much pressure from G Pride. And they smoke for the Roche versus up. They have Mata on Balrog side, they have buyback on Doom. Meanwhile, Gpride has buyback on Amber and Ursa. I think that Amber should be baiting with the buyback. He should be the first one to die and then buyback and then win the fight. Definitely could be a nice play. Doom onto the Ursa, but the arena comes out. False promise gets Draken out of the Fiend's grip. They find themselves two kills with the Ursa buying back immediately to rejoin the fight. But they're trying to kill off everyone before that happens. However, Tao does so much damage on the Ember Spirit. Doom, nice center stop, but Slight the Fist will find the kill. And buybacks on both sides will come out, sir. Nice underplay there from Burna Burna, but a two for kill. The two for two buyback means we're all on equal footing again. Well, you'd say that. The problem is TB's metamorphosis is gone. And Doom's, well, Doom is gone. If take a fight, it could be dangerous. However, Janik, he's gonna get taken down. That's a dieback. Robo Z found out, doesn't have a buyback himself. Draken, nice three man dove stop. All oh, that damage coming out from Burner Burner. They're on the run. Now he needs to be very careful because that could be a dieback. He's sticking down slowly. Draken blinks and gets the right click, finishes the job. And Metamorphosis has just ended, but no Ursa for 65 seconds. They're chasing for more. They do find more. The Ember Spirit actually wants to catch Sexy Yogi, which is, of course, a dieback if that would be the case. But the Ember is the one that loses his life. They're constantly looking for more fights here on the side of G-Pride. But uh, they're putting their cores in very forward positions and very dangerous ones. Yeah, I think it's very weird that you bait the buyback on Ursa. Because if she dies back, then you can't rush at all that's why i was expecting the ember to just initiate the team fight force the dune on him and you have the ember buying back so they could win the team fight but no they decided to bait with ursa and now even though dune has been used meta has been used they don't have ursa to take the roche and when ursa is back there's only 30 seconds for the Doom, only 40 seconds for Meta, so I'm not sure G Pride can do it, but they need to fight it. They need to try to win the fight somehow to outplay Balrogs, because if they don't get the Aegis now, they just lose all their timing. That's a dangerous game. TB is now ahead of now again. Of course, that buyback sets him up back so much. Whereas the TB, he survived that entire fight, got a kill, and uh, has been able to continue to farm. And I'm, he is still behind the Ember, but once that Scotty is done, you've got these beastie illusions just running all over the map, push it, split pushing every lane. Ember's going to need to use those bots, which I'm happy he got, because that's always kind of a little bit of a problem if you forget to buy bots. On an Ember Spirit against TB, that you could be put in an awkward position. We've immediately time lapses after walking up the high ground. Radiant's 
They actually smoke on the dire side. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Right after yeah, they, the peak. They really need that Roche. So they're forcing fights around that area. I think it's like Amber's going for Lincoln's and Ursa is going for that BKB and they might take damage. Oh, they come with quite spirit. Ozzy dropping low, he's dead again, doesn't have money for buyback because he keeps on buying every piece of the Ags per piece. So he, last fight as well, he didn't have a buyback because he bought out the point booster. Now he bought out the Ogre Axe and he still doesn't have buyback while Roche is up again. You kind of need to keep an eye on the fact that Roche can respawn, jump in, Draken, another Doom thrown out onto the Ursa, Fiend's Grip comes out, need to get that False Promise or interrupt Genic, actually they do get the kill onto now, another kill wave won't be able to come back, and Tao on the run does have Fire Remnant out, and that's going to be enough to get him out of harm's way, but uh, yeah, they did pop the meta, and are they going to, no, it seems. Try and push a little bit. Actually, get a little bit more aggressive. We've tried to get the catch. That's going to be Kara taken down. Well, again, the Weaver dies, but who cares if you get a big kill on the enemy's Mars? Yeah, the fact that they're again not using that meta for like Roche means that they still can't take Roche on Balrogs. Especially yeah, with the Weaver. And, dead. and Jeep Ride, they need to fight again and again. Even though they're losing fights, they need to keep fighting. Oh okay. yeah, gonna be able to uh, get taken down again. That means no buyback available for 50 seconds, but there's no Fiend's Grip, so you don't necessarily need him anytime soon. But on the other side, there's also no Metamorphosis. There's no Doom. They're just gonna walk in the Roche pit, and right now, you can't take a fight. Yeah, they just need to accept that Earth is gonna have it. They can try to steal with the Void Spirit, which I would not recommend, but I guess they understood that. So they're not fighting. I mean, that that's the case. They killed off, like they doomed the Ursa, they popped meta next to Roche. I would have expected they just walk in the Roche, get the Aegis. The shard. With that meta, because right now, after that fight, TB walked towards mid, farmed a couple of creeps, that was it. That was his entire meta usage. They got nothing in terms of objective. No towers, no Roche, just a kill here and there, which delayed G Pride for like, no time, and net worth is only 2k. Yeah, they needed the bugs from the Weaver to get Rose, and Weaver kind of kept chasing on the Mars, so I'm not sure if without the Weaver they could do Roche. Even that meta, oh, they can't TB. Well, TB dead and down for the count. Does not have a buyback, even though if he had it, he wouldn't want to use it. And yeah, right now G Pride getting fairly aggressive. It, uh, the uh, Lincoln Sphere also done on the Ember Spirit. So uh, against the Doom, against the Sunder, try and keep your Ursa from getting caught. But then letting G Pride do the Roche, that's actually what I wanted G Pride to do on the first game. Understanding they could not fight Duza. And this time, Barox, they look okay, we don't have meta, we don't have Doom, we let them do Roche. Because if they try to fight, but, uh, G Pride gets the Roche and a lot of kills with it. And they get a bait. They're trying to take over the map. Uh, find a Jedi roaming around. The consequences will Which is not too problematic, of course. On the Bane. And Fable really f Radiant feels underwhelming. Because <laughs> no one ever gets it. Radiant stretches are fortified. Mine is truly a blessed game. Still trying to decide if I like the BKB on Ursa. I can understand, but I think I'd like more a Basher. Um, yeah, I, I, I get what you mean. I mean, if you get hit by a Doom, you're still... It doesn't matter if you've got a BKB, you're dead. Pretty much every time and that bkb would be pretty useful in just general to control up the bkb doom or anyone for that matter because they do have some troubles every once in a while against the point spirit who's jumping in and out of the fight especially once he's got himself that ags done getting fairly close 
Same with the Weaver's Ags. That's going to be a huge buff for the Balrog's lineup. Once Weaver has his Ags, TB now has his Ayaskadi as well done. Arena comes out, Zexa. Weaver's going to get caught. They have to stun lock. No, they do not. False promise. That keeps the time lapse as well, but he's being completely held back. He's still going to die. He has 16 first swipes chargers, so that's me extra 600 damage per hit. That's the thing. You have the save, but you just like postpone your death. Yeah, a little bit uh, in a tough spot there. A TB is gonna go BKB Butterfly. That means Ursa, of course, is gonna need to get himself an MKB later, though. Ember Spirit's almost done with his Ags as well, and that means the back line's gonna be completely blown up. Oracle and Weaver are definitely gonna be the targets for the Ember every single fight. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant's yeah, and Oracle doesn't have a Glimmer Cape. Has either lens, of course. That's the item you build for Oracle. All the spells had such a nerf on cast range, so you need that item to play with the hero. But no save is for himself. Unless he wanna spend his ultimate on himself, then he's alive but can't do anything. And they found Robo Z. Gains grip, gets him caught. Lexi Yogi could not get in range, even if he got in range, wouldn't do matches because no false promise available. Oracle on the run. Oh, that's a nice reflection coming out. Jump in as well. They pop that Aegis. Draken's got that Doom, of course. He wants to use it on to now. He gets it off onto the Ursa, but he did have himself the Enrage, so he should be just fine for the time being on the Ursa. Herbal. Doom's already ended. Turns around, wants to retake the fight. They're actually winning. Dismar taken down. That's a lot of gold for Berna Berna, who does still have a Sunder in case it's necessary. Now he's going to try and go on towards the TB, but TB just runs away, gets himself speared to the side. But no one is there to actually deal damage to the TB. Gets the Sunder off Kara. The slow coming out from the Ayaskadi. This is a problem. The Bane is another one to follow suit. They did buy back on to the Weaver, though. But it definitely feels like that was not really necessary. I mean, TB did not even anywhere get close to dying that fight. Yeah, you can't focus a TB if you're an Ursa without Basher. And he won't even get the Basher. He's going for the MKB now because he see he won't have the Basher in time. And TB can get the Butterfly. So th that's why I don't like the BKB previously. Even though might get you alive in few situations, you just don't do what you're expected to do, which is damage on the team fight. If you can't control anyone on the team fight, they just kite you. And he should trust his team a little bit on that, on not having the BKB because Ember is using Lincolns on him. You have the sleep from the Bane to save you for a while. You have the Mars Arena to isolate the team fight. You have the Cookie. So, okay, now he decides to go for the Basher again, which done. Immediately. Boom! And on the other side, uh, TB does have his BKB. But they do have two ways of inter uh, stunning him, of course. The Fiend's Grip. And now that Basher on the other Done. Weaver getting caught. Oh, missed Arena, but the Weaver doesn't have a Shikuchi available and will be still finished off. Still not done with that Aghanim Scepter. And that buyback previously cost him that entire item for the time being. Yeah, and G-Pride, they're gonna take this tower very fast and make a decision. They can either defend their tier 2 on top or they can force high ground. Of course, you, you don't wanna try to take high ground. You just force the other team back by doing some damage on their tier 3. They're trying to trade towers. Or you don't do any of this. Yeah, you just uh, slash ignore anything that Asimi says. Uh, try to chase after a TB that's split pushing. Oh, the jump onto the Ursa. You think the control he pops his enrage in time, but the Doom gets thrown out again when he pops his enrage. The status resistance Doom means his Doom is about to end regardless. Find themselves a big catch onto the Bane. Next to Yogi, the Oracle again. He's gonna false promise himself because he knows he's otherwise going to die. And honestly, you, the TB doesn't need it because he's way too tanky. That doesn't make sense, like, to bait with an Ursa and you still have, like, 5, 6, 7 seconds TPs to, 
like they didn't trust that Barrocks would take the tower, I guess. They just like it wasn't a bait, because if they were baiting, they, they baited really, really bad. And you don't wanna a TB popping meta close to your towers. So definitely like when I mentioned two options, the option to go is hit their tier three because you make a terrible TP and then he's far away from your base. He doesn't have uh, he cannot send illusions nearby your base also. He cannot pop meta nearby your base. He needs to TP out of the Roche area and then start controlling the Roche area. So Chipri, they are so skilled, but they still Ooh. not with the best decision making in my opinion. Yeah, especially because um Ember has an has an AGS and he's got bots, so you don't have to go back with your entire team to defend it, especially not with your Ursa. Oh, Arena wasted in mid as well, on towards an illusion. Oh, that's painful. But yeah, you don't have to do any of those shenanigans because in case you get split push, you just send Ember back. Ember slides to fist the wave two, three times, then can just jump back to his Fire Remnant every single time. That's why he bought yeah. the bots. It's a BOT agony Ember, like the... You can't have more mobility than that on a hero. The smart mid. Oh. Quick snap fire kill. Kara's BKB is on cooldown now as well. And he doesn't have arena for 50 seconds. Roche is up in 30. That's the third. That's a free re refresher or axe. Okay, quickly. Your prediction. BKB doesn't have meta. Astini. Uh. Gonna be a refresher or is it gonna be an axe? 50-50. He's gonna say Ags. I'm hoping Ags as well. But I almost always get Ags, so I'm gonna go Refresher. Is it most of the time is Ags? So you're gonna go for the underdogs? Yeah, I believe in... Actually, no, I prefer Ags all, all day. Refresher is garbage compared to Ags. They find a free Bane kill, they walk in the pit, and it's Refresher! Which, I mean, and double do this. back on Bane. Die back on Bane, that's awesome. But yeah, the refresh is pretty nice on Doom. Double Doom. Double Terror Blade Metamorphosis. Ember doesn't have a shard, so he... Just gonna have it all on time. Take the fight? I don't know. Farrok, they didn't have to pop meta. Not that full Daedalus now done on the as well so uh <laughs> went for that one instead of the butterfly okay barrocks they're so far ahead now even it's just 3k advantage you really needed that Aegis on Ursa even though TB is not the best Aegis carrier in the game right because if you die with meta you just respawn without meta and you need to wait for two and a half minutes to have it again but still, nice. Ursa needed that item. Need yeah, Ursa definitely needed And the most important thing is, I've, uh, I think, the fact that they've got double. Like, nice. that is, is so attack. painful for the Jeep ride. If he gets a Doom off onto, like, the Ember and the Ursa, you lost the fight. Yeah. And again, just because Barog's playing so well. So every small mistake from G-Pride, they are heavily punished. So it begins with that decision to TP just the Ursa to top tower, then Bane TPs, Bane dies, need to buy back, and then he dies without buyback near the Roche pit. So because of that TP, they lose Roche. That's how well Barok's playing, they are punishing them for every small mistake. Well, MKB on the Ursa is almost done. Whereas Terrorblade, he's building the Butterfly afterwards. So going a little bit the other direction. He might cancel it when he sees. Ursa still hasn't finished up his boots. I guess he wants to get bots. But it is interesting to see. They've got the Weave, of course, with the time lapse. Burna Burna just fine. Sunder as well, full HP. And, you know, in case that goes wrong, Oracle still has False Promise. In case that goes wrong, he still has the Aegis. He's got in four lives. In case that goes wrong, Weaver will have the ultimate again because it's ridiculous. 20 seconds cooldown. In case that goes wrong, you can always give him the cheese. So, in a sense, you've got infinite lives. Yeah. Time lapse, walk away. Oh, 
free set of racks. Thank you. Come again. Cheap Pride Hope here is something similar that what they managed to do with the bat is isolating the team fight with a spear back into the tower. He should try to find that weaver and spear her to the tower. Burna Burna, there's the arena. Uses the Sunder, gets catch onto Caro, but they're going for the backline jump. Sexy Yogia in a bit of trouble. The Doom onto the Ursa. He's actually running out of the fight because that's a very long duration Doom. Kraken jumps in aggressively again. Of course, uh, doesn't have to throw the second Doom on towards his opponent because he knows the first one's going to be enough to get the kill. Ursa is dead. 90 seconds, no buyback. Mars, he's going to be the next target of that secondary Doom. And slowly ticking away, does he get himself in towards the fountain in time? I don't think that's going to be the case. In the meantime, Draken, very low at HP, chased from the Amber, goes deep, Tau gets silenced up, no kit, hit by the Aether Remnant, then beautiful Robo Z, prediction, King coming through, and Burna Burna, he's almost, uh, well, he still has that Aegis, and even as a son, he uses it on towards the Weaver. We'll continue pushing that middle set of racks, a gigantic team fight win for Balrogs, with all three of the G Pride cores dead. Luckily enough, there's still a tier 2 tower bottom, but they're just marking up that they want to go for the finish and the high the tier 4s. The GG gets called by G Bright. That's going to be a 2-0 victory for the qua open qualifier team. Balrogs take down G Bright in absolutely stellar fashion. They played so well on Balrogs. Like, G Bright also did a great game, but small mistakes that were heavily punished by Balrogs. Balrogs playing very high level here, looking like a Division 1 team definitely and they're definitely the favorites to go to Division 1 now. Well, there's still a couple of other very tough teams to beat in this uh, group. Of course, there are uh, some more matches to be played afterwards. Next on the list will be Wolf Team versus Mega Gaming, both teams are 0 and 1 currently, lost their first matches. So to be fair, both team lost against, well, the Balrogs. That's going to be an interesting affair, who will be successful in that regard, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty tough game in general. Laning stage started looking pretty for the Gorilla's Pride, especially once the Weaver left the lane. Felt like that was a big mistake that the Weaver did. Got the Gorilla's Pride at decent beginning stage afterwards, but for the most part, I mean, Burna Burna just kept on farming. Draken, I mean, we saw him on the Mars. We saw him on the, um, well, now on the Doom. Every single time, caught himself the Ursa. Every single time he doomed the Ursa. I think that's like four or five fights in a row. He catches the Ursa, hits him with the Doom, makes sure the Ursa, even if Ursa pops his rage, the Doom lasts still a very long time that he has to run out of the fight and they just sweep up the rest of the team and finish off the Ursa and, and so great stuff. I mean, I've been impressed from by Draken like qualifiers and I, he just impressing me. Half laners in South America, very solid. Yeah, and that somehow was throwing 8.6k net worth of Gorilla Sprite to the trash because they itemize Lincolns to the Ember and BKB to Ursa. And once you get doomed in Ursa, your BKB is useless. And you just bought a full Lincolns on Ember for nothing because he just bought because of this very spell. So yeah, very he, well played by Draco. He never hit that Link. Never, even though it was yeah. really meant to throw it. I think he thought that he wanted so that the Ember, the Doom wouldn't Doom the Ember. But he just went for the Ursa every single time instead. And Ursa had, like, said it, BKB. What does it do? The Doom with BKB. You still can't do anything in it. But of course, that concludes this series in a two fashion for Balrogs. Pretty solid performance. Next will be the team that lost against Balrogs, Wolf. Of course, uh, Lineup like uh, Tavo and the bunch from Brazil. Definitely another tier one team that we kind of expect to be uh, first division next season. But we'll have to wait to see what will transpire there. We'll be going towards a break. Next match will be starting in about give or take an hour. But we'll see you guys then. And uh, in case we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to South American Deep Division 2. Got ourselves a very interesting matchup. It's Omega Gaming versus Our Way. And well, or yeah, Wolf Team, whatever, because we currently don't know which team name they're really running under. I assume Wolf Team is the planned team that they're supposed to be, but they still need to change everything. Or what is exactly the case, but we'll figure that out uh, along the line. My name is Ika Truman and joining me in this matchup is Astini and well, this is definitely going to be an interesting match you think would be the favorite here. Hello DK Truman, hello everyone, very excited to watch the Brazilian squad here. Wolf team I believe, they just need to do the bureaucracies inside the game to change the tag because they communicate all the time uh, as Wolf team and I think they're the favorites here. I would be expecting a 2-0 from the Brazilian side, but again, I'm Brazilian, so oh, okay, my okay. bias here. I see it, I see it. Well, uh, you know, the only thing I always think, um, never forget 7-1, but uh, oh. uh, sorry, it's, really? it's, hey, we got beat you in that, you know, third final position spot for, oh uh, no, just, uh, just, I always gotta bring it up. Especially because I see that score so many. But nonetheless, <laughs> sorry for breaking some. The third spot's because we were tilted that we, <laughs> we lost the semi The national team <laughs> tilted. Ah, don't worry, yeah. we missed the recent World Cup anyway. So we suck. But, um, yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be an interesting show. And of course, as you said, both team, clear favorites. Um... Honestly, against the Balrogs, it's a bit surprising that the Balrogs won. Even though I definitely think that Balrogs are, like, top contender for the entire Deep Sea Division 2. But our way, I mean, King RD, 4DR, Tavo, HFN, you know me, this is just a straight up... Like, there's no way... This is a third spot Division 1 team. The only teams that I would say would beat them out, normally, would be, of course, Beast Coast and... Under predator. That's what comes to my mind. That would be the first thing I say. But if we go back to the open qualifiers, they lost to God Genesis on the first qualifier. And if you don't know any name of any player of, of God Genesis, that's what I expect because they're a super new team. They're like a Brazilian stack. There's one well known uh, name that is Bardo, but just in Brazil. So it shows that there is no more city team in South America. Any team can beat the top contenders. So they might be surprised by Omega Gaming if they lost on the first open qualifiers, for example, and they already lost for Balrog. So yeah, we are extremely hyped, excited, and with high expectations on them. But when we actually see them playing, they need to bring the results. I, I think my camera is frozen. Yeah, no, it's back. It's back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, Omega Gaming they got two owed by um, Gorillas, and well, that's a little bit unfortunate. Then on the other side, our way they got taken down two one oh, against so their so opponents, which we just did see the Balrogs absolutely crushed. However, it seems that the drafting phase is live, so we'll be heading in right now, as you can hear on the background. It's Dyer's band Quickly going now. on towards the bands, and well, the first band is not that surprising, is it, Steve? No, not surprising at all that Weaver, such a strong hero, but I can say that it's Maybe somehow it's surprising that the team that has first pick bans it, because usually, you're expected to do the best strategies that are in the game. And I believe Weaver first pick is one of that contenders. I'd go like Weaver IO are the best openings. So if you're first pick and banning Weaver, I hope they do IO. But. They're a fan of IO. They ban Gyro. Yeah. So that's one big combo that they can get. The IO. 10 seconds. Yeah, the thing with Gyro is that most of position 5 in our region, they do Gyro 5. And you don't want to play against that hero that it, you're not sure if you should full counter it. And then they just last pick 
another hard carry or you left it uncountered and it ended up being a carry and you have no answers to it. But still, it's a hero that Radiant's HFN does so pick. well, so I'm actually surprised they Dyer's decide to, to ban the hero. Lion. Okay, Lion first pick coming in. I mean, we do see also Snapfire and Mars getting banned. No, we saw it last series, uh, both games being picked up. So definitely first pick and oh, material. My test, my test. One, two, three. And a oh, couple of voice doing? lines being used Benzie. in the game right now. <laughs> As of course that lion was first picked. And the lion is always, you know, heavy burst. Uh, AoE stun, X on top, mana drain, laning stage is pretty tough. <laughs> There's a lot of just spamming through both sides. Ooh, Dawnbreaker coming in. That's, uh, I don't get to see a lot of Dawnbreaker game. Yeah, and especially they pick it on first phase, so it can be a Dawnbreaker 5, 3, mid, and we don't have that information, so that might be the reason why they go on the first phase, even though the hero is not perceived to be so strong. Omega, Ma Omega Gaming, they've already done that hero position 5 on the Claro Apu League. Uh, I believe almost all the times they do as 5, from what I'm checking right now. It's Radiant's ban now. So it might be the support duo and Invoker here for, for the R. That was totally expected. That's the most expected thing on the draft, to be honest because they played Invoker on the three last games for 4DR, so it was very expected that they would go for that same hero, because it's a hero that with Alacrity, you can do so much with the heroes that HFN plays. Five so HFN left. plays so much those hard carries that soak up all the farm in the map, that always try to be... It's one item ahead of the enemy team, and having Alacrity on top of that is such an empowering spell. And well, to be fair, you did already a very important aspect, that is 4DR. Like, he's a very renowned vocal player. Uh, pretty much every season, the hero that he loves wielding, but we'll have to wait and see how that goes, because Dawnbreaker and Earthspirit are actually not bad against Voker. Like, they can... Really run in seconds. your face and get on top of you, and that's not a position Voker wants to be in. Because of course you've got the tornado and a couple of spells to get them off, uh, to try and peel them off of you. But uh, once you get a roll in from an earth spit with a silence on top, dust thrown in, you're just a sitting duck as a Voker. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised by the bands. Like I, I agree that Invoker is not that great on the game, but they've been running that strategy so far, and they're happy with that. And then they banned the Sniper, <laughs> the hero we were talking about. I'm not sure if they want to run Duza Luna here, because the Darkseer ban, I, I would go for Luna is their first choice Radiant's here. To ban. But they banned Tide on Omega again? Okay. I, I don't quite understand the bans, but I, I would guess that our way they're going for either Luna, Duza, TA, and that's why they're banning Sniper and Darkseer. I mean, banning darks here makes a lot of sense. It's dire uh, now. Uh, and you're just in the laning stage. You get rolled on once time, uh, one time with the uh, iron shells. You get pushed back away from the tower, and you just burn to a crisp. Very hard to lane up against, and very aggressive in the early game. So that's kind of something that they don't want on our Ten way. Maybe seconds. said looking for a little bit more of those late game safe laners that don't get destroyed by earth spit in the laning stage beast master ban also you know same kind of idea you get pushed away by the earth spit you get put in an awkward position you slowly die yeah there's a great duel with earth spirit but invoker is such a nice counter to dark Seer because you have that dispel tornado and you have the tornado to catch someone running away Kind of surprised yeah, even with their pick. spirit and they go for the Duza ban because they read something like what i was saying but i would ban Duza and luna because i think luna can do just the same job as Duza here for our way 10 seconds i definitely think that there are 
couple of very nasty heroes uh, to deal with, but the Dusa makes the most sense because, well, we see Dusa in every game, much, and um, Dusa's pretty good, superly tanky, very annoying, that's the main important part, very annoying. I'm gonna choose to go for a mid laner that can actually handle the Invoker, because you could dodge, like, every spell on a Void Spirit. Like, Quaswex is normally the build that you want to go, but Quaswex doesn't do anything to touch. EMP very easily. Yeah, and again, you have Reach for that Invoker, right? You can jump into him with Void Spirit, Earth Spirit, Dollbreaker, so they have all the answers they need for the Invoker. Here comes an Ogre, which again makes me think seconds. that's gonna be a Luna or any other range corp. Five seconds so PA left. maybe? But I, I strongly would like to see a Luna. Unless they wanna like secure now a Legion Commander and then later go for that hard carry since they have Luna, TA, and maybe draw, so they still feel secure that they have three options and they can they can guarantee the Legion Commander, which would be super good for their draft. But I think Luna is just the safest choice here. Okay. In uh in the draft so far. They got the ogre, of course. Ooh. They want to get some ranger, as you said, a trow ranger, which would be pretty nice. Still scary against an earth spirit, but luckily enough, ogre can uh, defend you against any issues that might come through our way. Are they going to choose their off laner or their laner? Right question. Dyer's turn to pick. It does Legion become the Legion Commander, Commander which probably, most likely, is going to be the off laner. I don't know how. Do you see the feed faster than me or something? I don't know how you always predict this. Like, he literally predicts every stupid pick. Well, it's not stupid, but like every single pick coming through somehow magically. It's like the sniper in the last series. Two seconds before they pick it. How? I study the game and I know the teams well. So I know the heroes they play and what would fit on it's the really play style really they're looking for. Yeah, but so this is I'm... some next level knowing of stuff. <laughs> this is some <laughs> ridiculous brain power. I'm just baffled. I've never yeah. met anyone who is that good at rough picks. I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, it's what I devote my life to. I'm always studying the game. I'm always studying draft and I'm glad Five seconds to left. see some things like this coming because uh, I could really see they're going for Luna or Legion because Legion, you have one more spell that you are putting in Asteroid. Uh, wait, Asteroid? I missed the word. Uh, You're empowering your hero. Oh, uh, the, um, yep, I've lost it as well. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Yeah, well, another buff. And together with the Voker and the Ogre Magic. Steroids, got... steroids. You are putting steroids in your heart to carry. Oh. So you have the Ogre buff, you have Alacrity, and you have the press the attack. So that's how they like to play. They just throw every possible buff at HFN and tell, hey, HFN, please carry us on that match. So Luna was perfect here, and the only reason it's they would not go baby. for the Luna would be to have one more hero to help him out in the game. To ban. And I'm surprised they don't ban the Luna. Dyer's turn to ban. Well, still available as you said. Well, there's still a ban possibility Radiant's here. Turn to ban. But it's going to be oh the TA God. ban. Honestly, I thought TA maybe Shadow Fiend safe lane is still a possibility here. Which is honestly not that bad. Yeah, they tried, but I really don't like it. But, well, they can try again. Yeah. Works with the Ogre seconds. in the lane. Has all the buffs. Could go magic damage against left. Timber if necessary. Yeah. That's was the next thing I was going to say. If you go raise against Timber, because with raise you can actually deal with that lane. But I guess Luna is super fine here. Luna is okay against the Timber. It's one of the few carries that you have so much magic damage that you can actually handle the lane. That's uh. You need something with a bit of magic damage, as you said. 
to try and keep the Timbersaw off of you. And it's going to be the Ursa, who's no magic damage whatsoever, but a completely different kind of safe laner. And because it's, of course, Jilty doesn't really care that much about the Timbersaw. Ogre cares, but, you know, it's an Ogre, so also doesn't care at the same time. And this means that you're probably going to take down Roche at, what, 12 minutes? I mean, Bloodlust plus yeah. the LC buff plus Invoker, Roche is dead. Like, straight up. They have the tools to take it even earlier. And he's going to have a nice lane, right? It's a pick totally with the idea that he wants to win the lane. And then Omega Gaming, can they go like for illusion cores like Naga, even against the Legion? Can they go for a draw? Naga would problematic. Monkey, possibly on the Ursa. Uh, Monkey is not that bad in the lane against the Legion Commander. Iron, you can, uh, you easily would. And the troll, okay. Trolls are actually very good against the Ursa because you can pretty much survive the Ursa's jump on you and your ulti lasts longer than his ulti. So you survive in the end. Same with uh, popping it in time against the LC so the duel doesn't help you. I actually like the troll though. I definitely don't see troll like ever being picked up anymore. Yeah, it's one of the answers for the lane of Legion, right? And it's a hero that is not that easy that you duo him. But I would like the monkey a little bit more. Just because I think Invoker can kite him very well. And it's 4DR Invoker. <laughs> like, it's such a good hero. It's such a good player. Player hero combo, Ten you know? Seconds. So. I want to. Uh, the ice wall, and then, uh, you know, a couple of other things on top. Be fairly annoying for the uh, troll to do anything. Honestly, I think a lot of. Important factors here for Omega Gaming are going to be the, the two spirits that are going to have to make all the room in the world. Keep uh, Wolf Team or our way. I don't know which one we're going to stick with away from the world until he is uh, farmed enough. Yeah, I think we're going to see Wolf just snowballing because now I believe it's kind of the best team with the best draft and it's like a radiant draft with ursa which makes it easier to get roche they have all the tools they need to just snowball through the match and they just can't afford to make that much mistakes because as mentioned like everything on that tournament is quite good so they're gonna punish you for mistakes if you're running that snowball strategy but i believe they're experienced enough to not make those mistakes after we see the game about to go live and your prediction right, is I guess our way yeah that way that way his way yeah our way wolf yeah. I mean it's gonna be very confusing which one do you want to stick with wolf I guess do you know why they're called wolf I have Hello, no Mike idea test. Mike test. one two three they are sponsored by... Oh, they signed Not... yeah. December 2nd. I got signed by... Yeah, but they... they... Not that they got sponsored. It's a new organization by Flow Podcast. It's the biggest podcast in the country. And, like, the host is just, like... He loves Dota 2 and he always wanted to invest in Dota 2. And Wolf is Flow written the other way around <laughs> that's the perfect reason <laughs> i took a while like it was mind-blowing when someone typed that i'm like oh oh okay or you know <laughs> yeah because one of the most famous teams in history in south america's elite wolves is uh the previous smash team that uh, unfortunately they they got banned, but it was one of the biggest teams in South American history. So some related to that, like oh, they are the new Lobitos, or how you call Wolf in Portuguese or Spanish. But no, they're just like flow written backwards.
Yeah. I, be I believe this one is Peru, if I recall correctly, because I saw in the lobby. And yeah, so Bolivia is closer to Peru than to Brazil. Uh, okay, that's kind of misleading because Bolivia has borders with Brazil and with Peru. But the Brazilian server is on the opposite side from Brazil that the border with Bolivia. Thank Does it make sense? You precious weak thing. You precious weak thing. So like we have borders on the west and our server is on the very east. That's a strange man. I'm all for a little downtime. You feeling fresh? Together, no, it's cool. I got five ping to it. Let's not blame it. Don't let people know that's not good for the entire region. Come on. There is... Russia is in Sweden. That sounds weird, but yeah. It's Luxembourg. It's Luxembourg. I believe Luxembourg, Austria, and then the Russian one is Sweden. <laughs> I accidentally muted myself. <laughs> I hope not for too long. My bad. But uh, yeah, we were talking about the different regions where they were stationed. So it fairly interesting affair. Right now, I mean, if 4DR is a real chat, he goes Quas Exort, yeah, especially because he's got the Goku hair. But he's not gonna go for boss exit because no one ever does, and he already queued up the Urn of Shadows. Why do yeah, people hate exit? I know that it's good, the stuff, but so much fun. Yeah, but you need to be more active on the early game. That's the thing as a mid laner. The battle begins. I want to take the fight or uh, Omega against an Ursa. Level one, he'll just right click Hello, you to Mike death. Test. Mike test, one, two, three. Well, I should have done that. Hello, Mike test. <laughs> yeah, we need that voice line for the stream. Maybe it was Tavo trying to communicate with you all the all the time. Yep. You exactly. DK forgot to unmute himself. He's just watching the stream. AFK. Yeah, I knew what was on his mind with the Legion Commander, and he knew about the mic. Don't be coming in. Right clicks against Liss X. Doesn't, of course, have reactive armor just yet. He does have the Timber Chain to get some last hits on the creep. Or attempt to get last. Walking down. Blood secured. They have their names actually in caps. Mingate and Chan! <laughs> that reminds me of, um, what's it called? Uh, Star Trek. The second new one, you know, with the Wrath of Khan. He goes, Khan! Now we can go, <laughs> Chan! For every kill he gets. <laughs> Gotta keep an eye on it. In Brazil, we don't use caps, but we use own as King Gong. It's like, own means big. So he's a big king. Ow. So it's yeah. King Ow. I'm gonna probably stick to King RD. Because like I'm Les Long. Let's go. It's a way of calling Lelis. The offlaner of Alliance. Les Long. Oh! I... Well, yeah, I just normally say Les Long. Yeah, because uh, I'm, I'm a European that only has like, well, no, to be fair, I am Dutch. We also have some weird ways of saying that stuff. Like, you know, semi-Swedish sounding. Kitchen for us is Kuken. Who? You know, the region's weird. The more you know from each other, the more you learn. Yeah. It's a culture exchange. Brazil qualified. Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking about the World Cup that's coming up in Qatar, but I thought Brazil qualified, right? However, I forgot, you know, there's like yeah. 
10 teams in South America trying to compete, and there's like six of them that go through. <laughs> yeah. There's like no chance Brazil's not gonna qualify. <laughs> oh, you'll never know, you'll never know, but yeah. We, we had good uh, results on qualifier. I guess we were the first one to qualify. Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah, we got. We made it way too close. But we did qualify, so. You in Qatar. In November. Yes, indeed, in November. Which is terrible for us. I don't know for you. Yeah, you probably always have nice weather then. For us, it's cold. We can't, like, yeah. have a party outside and watch the football match together. Everyone's like, no, go away, it's cold. For us, it's warm. It might be even too warm, right? Because we are in, on the South Pole, so it's... your Winter is our summer. So it's actually warmer than normal. Maybe oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, your summer has the same temperature as our winter, so we are always fine. <laughs> yeah, no, but if you get our winter, you cry. I cry. I hate my winter. Cold. Fortyar might cry on the mid lane. Oh no. He survives. Does he? Yes. Uh, he has a tornado yeah. ready as well, in case it's needed, plus the TP coming out from King Out. King Out. King Out? No. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna miss say that every... Oh. Oh. I'm just gonna stick with King RD. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Well, I guess chat just realized that um, I muted myself. Guys, putting up a barricade. For quite some time. So this game, not really as much action as we saw in the Balrogs match. I mean, a couple of like small skirmish fuffles, but so far no real attempt on each other's lives. No real aggression coming in. So bottom lane, then get spooked. But with the Bloodlust buff, of course, a pretty fast boy. No, solve for him. Yeah, I was expecting more aggression because if you go Earth Spirit, you want to do rotations all the time. And Earth Spirit has no kills, no assists. So I believe that's quite good for Wolf. Because if you're an Earth Spirit and not getting kills, you're set. You don't farm. Like, farm heroes. Yeah, that's the problem with Earth Spirit. Terrible farming hero. Until you, of course, start running down enemies and get those kills. It's gonna go for the Yule Scepter first item. Of course, uh, stuff against, you know, uh, Ursa kiting is always great. Uh, duels, you know, get rid of the LC in a duel. The Vo Voker Sunstrike dodge, if that you get to that point in the game, of course. It's gonna be quite some time until the Voker levels some points in Exhort. In the meantime, Timbersaw, he is just... Stacking those nice, juicy cam uh, waves on top of each other. Make sure that the lane gets auto-pushed. Look at Ursa items. He's going for the battle for it. Okay. I guess he wants to take this game late. I mean... You know, they are the more experienced players. So I think that taking every game late is probably more advantageous for them. Tavo, nice dodge top lane. That's rooted up though by the troll. Dropping low, but we'll be able to ease. Yeah, and it's about playstyle. I believe HFN, he always wants to be farmed. He want to be ahead on net worth, even if that means giving some space for the enemy team on the early game. I mean, that's just... Uh, you kind of don't want to make that risky play of going for a very aggressive game, and then you just can't break your way through. And then you're standing there with an early game draft that can't do anything. And the Battle Fury Earth just farms so incredibly fast. Though I've seen a lot of people go for just a ring of casual ring of health. And not finish the Battle Fury, but just only get a ring of health. Continue farming. Ochre TPing bottom though, very early on. I guess they want to push down the tier 1 tower. Or even go for a gank attempt onto the Timbersock. And they lock him down. Rolling Boulder in. Pushes him away. He does survive. He gets... Uh, Cancelled or interrupted possibly. But a very interesting choice to go for that gank attempt bottom lane. I mean, right now Tano is having a pretty good game. Mid. 
Yeah, I don't get it why they would try to get the skill without the earned charges. With the with the earn, this could be acceptable. They might get a chance of killing, but without it, there was zero chance. Especially on their tower. If it was like a push lane, I get the TP gank attempt. Like th then it makes sense. But this was very far back. It's very. It, I, I mean, the experience mid got gifted to the line in the meantime, which is pretty nice, but he only got like two creeps and then fell back. Yeah, and now their spirit's gonna have a lot of XP mid because Void Spirit he has the haste and he's going for HFN. Oh no. HFN drop and load, does not have enrage available anymore, and he knows he's a goner, so he is dead. Yodomi as well, in trouble, chased down by Lissax. And the Omega early game does manage to get the kills, which probably should result in the tower gone, because, well, it is a timber saw, and eventually the tower's gonna go down anyway. Yeah, and that's an outcome of that bad rota rotation from the invoker. That's what I'm saying, like, if you make mistakes, you're gonna be punished for that, for sure. And Invoker had no TP, so they knew they could die if they are so. Still, bottom lane to defend it, but uh, Timbersaw at the moment is level 8. Level 4, Timber Chain. The reactive armor, he's a pretty tough Why cookie to beat. I mean, that pass range and speed on the Timber Chains. Pretty nasty to try and beat. You need a lot of lockdown, maybe even a duel to try and take him down. Yeah, or just that he's diving so much and tanking many tower hits, then you might be able to TP with the Invoker, but... Currently, Timbersaw is the king of bottom lane. Even though Ursa is second, HFN had a very good lane. He did die, but... But does it matter if you're second in net worth only just 200 gold behind the troll who... Granted, also had a completely free lane, and is also going for the Battle Fury. Oh, this is gonna become a very late game. I mean, we have three kills in the first minutes. I'm expecting at least a 40-minute game. Yeah, but but I'd rather be the troll going for the Battle Fury than Ursa. So I think Omega is happy with trading farm right now. Even though on the very late game, then it makes a difference, right? Because you have the Legion Commander with press the attack, giving you that BKB, you have Alacrity. Then it can turn hard, but I can see on this mid game, Omega will have that advantage. Uh, that's uh, pretty much the question how they're going to do it, though. Big stacks in the jungle being made by the Radiant team. Which Ursa is it's looking to farm up right now, doesn't have his Battle Fury done just yet, but uh, with the entire grouping of the Radiant side, it's going to be easy farm. However, there's a smoke guy coming in, they find the catch. Onto Dawnbreaker on the side, that's just a bait and switch. Thanos going to jump in aggressively, gets the catch onto 40R, but there's the press the attack. Get rid of the debuff, big AoE silence from Dark Demon, they're trying to disengage, and Tano, he's out of spells, he's getting dueled. The Void Spirit's in trouble, the Void Spirit is almost dead. To simulate, no, won't be able to get it off and big fight coming out from Wolf Team. Okay, I found really, really weird that Wolf, they were farming S5 on Triangle, but they knew something. They knew that Omega was going to try that play and they just ante anticipated it. But even though they got two kills, they don't change any network because... They had five heroes locked on the triangle, sharing farm, while Timber is just farming the entire bot lane. Yeah, and Troll also just farming away. He's almost done with the Battle Fury. I mean, HFN is go. fully done with the Battle Fury, so he can take those ancient stacks in no time. That means he's going to get the, his uh, boots and stuff done. And I mean, these two safe laners are just farming like crazy. The only difference is Troll went for his full phase boots first instead of finishing up the Battle Fury. Bottom. Oh, that would be a painful death. Does have a tornado. Can they control him though? Timber chain forward. Shakram on top gets the kill. Or he does AP in, but won't be able to really do anything because Timber saw is level 11 already in a 12 minute game. Yeah, the Timber is so strong, especially for a Timber that went 
against an Ursa. That's not such a free lane. Wouldn't expect him to be so strong now. And that seems to be the Bolivian speciality. As I mentioned, like Whisper, Oscar, both from Bolivia and both offlaners playing very well in South America and both they have such a strong team where you need to like first phase ban against their team, so trying a pretty strong team here, here, Lisex. Not too shabby currently. And a 2k net with lead after a 13 minute game is nice, but they're looking to go for Roche. Or at least they're looking There's to go for Gang. There's a smoke with a dagger. He used two smokes though. Dire that move. Yeah. No Ursa heads smokes. into the pit. It does get scanned out immediately by the Earth Spirit though. And he's gonna roll in onto a defense, spots him out, gets the silence off as well. There's gonna be the big light of death stun onto the Ursa. They're gonna surround him. The rest of the radiant team needs to rotate in. There they come. Ursa gets kicked back. Dark Demon coming up big. Gets the kill. They will lose Tano in the process. But they're rushing in to get these kills as well. Because the Troll Warlord can take down Roshan himself. And 40R would be a huge added kill. Nice! First spike coming out. But is it going to be enough to keep him alive? That is unlikely. And that is exactly the case. 40R loses his life. They get... Another big catch though. Tano, Tavo, is he gonna blink dual Dark Demon just for that dual victory damage? Wants to. So, uh, it is risky. However, they defend Roche, ask them their scan, but they do keep growing the net worth. It's a battle for a Ursa forcing Roche. I, I don't like what I see here on our way. They seem kind of lost with the playstyle. Middle tower is not feeling a little bit well. trying to uh, find their avenue, but the troll warlord he's farming up nicely. And honestly, in the late game, I'd rather be scared of a troll warlord than of a Ursa because troll at least has you know the chance of swapping over towards range. Yeah. Now they're doing what they should have done. They need to take this tower, they need to control some areas of the map that now belongs to Omega. They need control and vision to actually do Roche. So finally, they're taking that tier one top tower with 15 minutes, but they're 4K behind. Took so much for that decision, and they really need that tower to open up the map. Definitely trying their best. Yeah, I'm surprised that Omega they just let it go. It's fine that you let it go that tower, but usually you want something in exchange. And they had a catapult on mid lane, but they didn't force anything. It is uh, looking very problematic right now. Still haven't taken down that first Roshan. And honestly, I would assume that they're going to keep an eye on the area. Because they don't, of course, have a scan anymore. So it is back up. Jump yeah, duel. Dawnbreaker is dead, but does have a buyback and her ulti. So it's honestly, I think it's a nice kill. But it doesn't do... Stretches are fortified. I think Omega is on the right area of the map, but they should be controlling the power up rune. It was a region that didn't go for tunnel because they weren't paying attention at the power up. And if you're 4k ahead with Void Spirit, you need to control that rune. That's what allows you to actually take fights and snowball. Region rune, not the best, but if you get Arcane or DD, it's game winning. Void Spirit, he's gonna go for the uh, Kaya Sange first item, which, I mean, I get it, it's like the normal standard item these days. So, Aghanim Scepter would be very good to have against the Ursa Evoker, and even the Lion this game. Like, especially making sure that the Ursa stays silenced. Yes, they do already have a silence on the Ursa Spirit, but uh, making... Just, just don't want to be dealing with an Enrage in those team fights. Yeah, and Ulf would be so good against the Ursa, also as a save for the duo, while Legion doesn't get a BKB or the press the attack uh, shard. Would be interesting to see, but his understanding is that their 
lacking that much, which I don't really agree with, but it's playing well, so. Let it slide for now. Timbersaw yeah. is going for the load serve. Always a nice combination when you look at Legion Commander, the double duel damage uh, shenanigans that could come through, which is very scary, but of course, it is amazing against a lion, an ogre, an evoker. Three the heroes that don't like their spells getting uh, purged off or reflected. Yeah, and for the Arveso comes after Timber Ill, so he already has one mechanism of dispelling, and with the Lotus Orb, he's gonna have two. So, I believe 4DR should have gone for the Midas just with Urn, without upgrading the Vessel, because it's a slow game. They have Battle for the Ursa, they're not getting... Oh, they, Ursa bottom. they are getting the Ursa, it does have a Salty available. Troll's trying to chase, but that's a nice air spike from King RD. Roll in, won't be able to connect on top of him, and... Lion's even gonna get the TP away. The chase though, Dark Demon going deep, has his Yules done as well. Catch on to Ursa, he doesn't have his ulti available and when the sun comes out then... Chan! That's the kill. <laughs> With the help of Mingate. Yep. <laughs> Alright, now they're finding Yadimo, Yadomi, sorry. But uh, they're finding all the kills and walking into the pit saying hello. Troll's got himself the SNY fully done. He's going for the BKB next. Right now, I mean, we've given the... Oh, that's a big blast. We've been given a lot of love towards uh, Wolf Team, but uh, Omega looking pretty solid. Troll's gonna continue taking Roche. King RD gets taken down. 40R, what can you do? They need to get a jump in or deal with anything in the pit, but a level 2 Meteor it doesn't really do anything, and 40R is probably even gonna die afterwards. So, Invis comes out. No dust. Actually, he does have a dust on the Earth's bit, but they already did lose him. Process. Nonetheless, the first Roshan, surprisingly enough, went to the team that was still capable of taking Roche. But honestly, Wolf Team should have had that Roche ages ago. Yeah, the thing is, they've been punished by the Ursa build. If you don't have Diffuso, you cannot fight into that early Roche. And Omega Gaming, they took advantage of that. So they are taking the chances that Wolf are giving to them. Oh, there's smoke here. Might get Mingata. Well, that's gonna be victory at the very least so the troll of course did have that aegis they're gonna go in on to the lc try and chase him down tavo will lose his life that is the aegis popped and victory damage for your off laner which honestly i'd still say you'd take that for wolf you mean or uh yeah for wolf team. yeah i'll be happy for wolf they got the duo stack and they got the finger stack. Oh, and the scale. finger as well. Okay. They can scale. Gotta get those stacks like for your infinity. level 15 and level 20 talents. Good spirit. Be careful. Problem is they don't have like hard, like except for duel, the lockdown on wolf team is very minimal. Like the, the line, yeah, but ogre, Pretty much banks on luck and 4DR. His lockdown is something that Voice Spirit can just easily walk away from. Like he hits a astral step slash dissimilate if he gets hit by uh, after a tornado or the cold snap and you're just completely fine though. The lion is the only one that you really have to fear right now. Jump in, Dark Demon in trouble, rolls to safety and the gank attempt has failed. The only one in front is Lissex. And well, he's a timber saw with a Yule's Lotus. Jump in, looking for a duel coming out. There's gonna be the big heal blast. HFM pops his BKB, is looking for more. There's the duel on the point spirit. He's caught out, Troll Warlord Dalti. Ingati! Running in, going for the heavy damage. HFN on the run, but can't get away because the Troll Warlord again, he just outlasts you with that battle trend. It's so rare to see HFN dying so easily. You usually see him tanking an entire team fight, no matter what hero he has, because as you can see, he had Alacrity, he had the press the attack with the shard, he had Bloodlust, all the tools he need, but he can't even trade his to the troll. 
Troll in trouble. Needs help. His entire team is gone, so he's just gonna die in the tree lines. It looks like Timber's almost there to help out. No mana for Sunstrike for, for the Ark. Takes a lot of damage. And Lissax, the saving grace for Mangati. Still, Mangati still needs to be very careful of the Sunstrike, though. Sunstrike actually on to Dark Demon. Another dual victory. And slowly but surely, Davo is building up those damage stacks. Yeah, now you can see the experience of Wolf counting because... Omega Gaming, they had such a nice team fight, but they couldn't capitalize at all with that because Troll went for the tier 2 tower, meanwhile the team was farming jungle, so they were simply not on the same page. And I mean, not even the jungle for close. Tower. Like, they went all the way back towards their own jungle. Uh, yeah. Pretty problematic mention to try and help him out, especially the Void Spirit, like, you kind of want him there. To try and bail you out. And the Void Spirit went for BOT, but I feel like the Agonies would be so strong. Because if you jump on the Lion and kill him, Wolf doesn't have that much control afterwards, so... And he can definitely burst the Lion with Agonies. Top side. Catch on to HFN. Does pop his BKB already. Rest of the Radiant team trying to rotate in, but Mangati, he's going ham with his ulti and drrrr, HFN dead again. He said that, you know, he wants to tank these big team fights, but he can't tank anything because he's getting caught off guard every single time. Yodomi on the run, chased down by Dark Demon, no way to run away with the Earthspit on your heels. And the rest of the team are right in tow. This is looking disastrous for Wolf Team because honestly, Omega, they're looking crisp. Especially the Timber saw this game. 7 0 7. He's looking it's insane. Bronze tier Timber. Either he doesn't have Dota Plus or he's just like a god. Or to, this is just, you know, he never plays on his main. That's also what's up. <laughs> yeah. Hiding threats for TI. Exactly. Because uh, they know, you know, we're going to qualify, get to Division 1. Then afterwards, we're going to win Division 1, get to Major, and then get those DPC points. Easy, TI. Almost there. I mean, if Team Spirit can win TI. What? Yeah, the Cinderella story over and over again. Yeah, that's something that happens with, like, every TI. Same. <laughs> Very rarely do the favorites actually do anything. Yeah, LG, they, they went to the... It was amazing finals, right? From oh, 100%. But... It was so good. Oh, catch on to Tano. Tries to disengage. Tavo wanted to jump onto Tano. God, that's so annoying. <laughs> that they're Tano and Tavo. So it is going to be you don't be taken down. Nothing really invested on either side as well. I mean, the troll BKB, yes, but he still has his ulti. And Timbersaw has tiny cooldowns on everything. Void Spirit as well. No big, dire ulti. Ma yeah, magnetize. You know, who cares about a magnetize use? Yeah, I believe Omega, they just want to farm the troll BKB so they can win the next Roche fight. Meanwhile, bottom... Duo, Sunstrike. Let me get yourselves an Ags at one point on the Voker, and then you kind of always have like that easy... Yeah, he's going for the Ags next. You know, always the easy dual uh, Cataclysm combo to get a free kill on pretty much anyone but the Timber. Yeah, and it's 90 damage for Tavo. BKB bot on 4DR. So the other cores from Wolf, now they can actually... Do more things on the team fight, I expect. What does HFN need to build, do you think? Just to make sure that he can do something. Asher? I feel he needs, mm. like, something more to survive. Panic? Uh, but... I don't know. I think he, did, <laughs> he goes for a basher and try to initiate all fights. Just, like, play mist on the map. And enter later on the team fight. You can't be that hero tanking spouse. 
I do love Tavo's choice though. He did go for the Heavens Halberds, almost done with it, so... That is really good against the troll, especially if he turns to, you know, the ranged troll for a second. And like, if HFN can farm his buyback now, then he can actually frontline for the Roche fight. So he dies, buys back, queen fight, get Aegis. That's how Plus it shard. Work. I mean, that shard is always crucial to get for yeah. Nursa. He also got the Mind Breaker, which is amazing against the Void Spirit. Her spirit also. All heroes with skate. That has a full abyssal blade gun, which is uh, pretty quick. HFN. He is. I mean, that's the plus side of the Battle Fury compared to the Diffusal. He is right on the heels of uh, Ingati, the farming department, who also has his bastion out done, by the way. But a always trade buyback for abyssal. I'd way rather have the buyback. On that Roche fight, then just upgrade the the Basher. I'll not even upgrade the Basher. Just get yourselves a Vanguard that you put in your inventory. Yeah. He's got and it in the backpack. That's that's not what you want right now. And he's gonna show bottom. Meanwhile, Roche responds, and I guess Omega they will just check it again. I would hope so. So here goes the fire spirit for wolf and omega. And they know where it says bottom, so they could actually take the roach before Ursa can connect. Yeah, he needs to run for quite some time. They need to delay this somehow, and that's exactly what the Vogue is trying to do. Can't give away an Aegis Plus, a free shard. I mean, it's still pretty nice to have. It's not like the die have like superheroes with the shard compared to the troll. Shard, which is insane. And uh, the Ursa, I mean, the troll shards like garbage. Void Spirit's pretty nice. Stormbreaker's like okay. Earth Spirit's. Actually, Earth Spirit's not bad. Timber Saw's. And Timber 1 okay. is fun. Which matters. It's super fun. Yeah, but Timber Saw is also pretty good because you can push towers with it. Which is something Timber Saw sucks at. Okay, smoke from Wolf. Here comes the team fight. Yeah, but the Dawnbreaker should be the one tanking the smoke gank, actually. Because if he dies, he can immediately buy back Solar Guardian into the fight. Yeah, but it's a team bird there that doesn't have buyback. Dark Demon. We're all so incredibly on tense. Yeah, he does have bots, so he's there in no time. Yeah, he should really push fast that lane, so he creates a lot of pressure on Wolf map side because there's a catapult wave, and they, if they keep fighting on, on Roche, they will lose the tier two bottom. But HFN, he just jumps into Roche. He's gonna do it, even before they notice. Well, that's a uh, nice Aegis she, uh, Aegis, I always still think she, she's, but the uh, shard and he walks away because they don't check the pit, surprisingly <laughs> enough. No one thinks, oh, we just took Rose down to like half HP, let's keep an eye on it. No, they're, they're, yeah, sure, if they're not showing under that ward, out know, to the left side, then they'll probably never walk into it. That was a big fat mistake. Yeah. But kudos to HFN, they thought so fast on that move. He just jumped there and when you look at him, Roche is done. And now HFN top net worth of course with that free shard. Mainly because he had that free shard even though it is still very close between the two sides. But he also has that Aegis so in second life, he's, he, all of a sudden he's twice as hard to kill. Well, yeah, that's the yeah. That's the time that Omega they should skip fights for the five minute duration. I think so. Even they have agonies on Void Spirit and BKB on trolls, such strong timings. I don't think you wanna fight into two lives of Ursa. They just use that uh, Void Spirit bots to uh, kind of split push the entire map out. So they are looking to try and catch Tavo. 
Uh, that was spotted the void spirit. Yeah, he dips out. There's some split push shenanigans, as you said, trying to dodge any full five on five fight. Even going for the tier two tower mid as a good trade, which honestly is definitely a very good trade. Oh, jump in. Tavo tried to go for the duel, but honestly, the Timbersaw is not the one you want to duel. They want the Troll Warlord instead. Pops is BKB looking for King RD. Does take him down. No matter for King RD. Going for the back line. Tavo in trouble. And he is dropping low. Tavo does get himself away. They're now stuck. Slowed down. The Age just got popped on the side. Troll Warlord. The Age of gets absolutely brutalized by Minga T. And the heal coming out on top. That is going to be the full Ags heal coming in. Oh, the Cataclysm. Oh, but he gets a double kill thanks to the Battle Fury Cleave. Beautiful stuff. They do have a buyback available on the Radiant side, but they're losing everyone and everything. 40 are on the run. Will be able to stay alive, but that's a three buyback coming out from Wolf Team. And they had the Aegis and the Shard, and what does it matter, Asini? Omega just outplayed them with the macro game. They force Wolf back and they just back up one by one. And HFN, he felt so strong that he jumped into five heroes. So he lost his first life very early and he left all his backline to, to die. He can't deal with the troll ever. Oh, jump in, going in for the troll right now. No ulti for Minga D, but does have the Abyssal Blade, gets the stun up. On the run, there's going to be a duel. Oh, but this is maybe not the best duel coming in. Duel victory damage. It will not be achieved currently. They do manage to find themselves the kill. That's a die back onto Tavo. Troll Warlord ulti charging forward. Give me blood. Give me money. Give me everything you've got. And that's going to be 40R. Pops the BKB on the run. But there are so many die heroes on the chase. 40R gets bashed with the last hit. Does he get away? Yes, he gets caught in the end. That's a full team wipe. They don't lose a single soul on the side of Omega Gaming, and that is just beautiful. They outplayed both team completely. You see, the underdogs, they always can make it. I just choose to cheer for the underdogs on their own game. Because now they're like playing so great on Omega Gaming side. So, so great. I don't see how they lose that game anymore. And the problem is with the uh, Ursa, um, like the Troll Warlord, of course, with the uh, Whirling Axes, gives himself 60%, well, the enemy mischance of 60%. Without an MKB, unless you pop your BKB, you, like, can't hit the Troll Warlord. You just don't hit him. You hurt, don't hurt him. He's near impossible to kill at that point. And that's kind of what Ursa had a problem with in most of these fights. Troll, and 909, 10-0-11 Timbersaw. That's why you don't want to go late game as an Ursa, and you don't build Battle Fury on the hero. Man, I, I'm, I'm one of the most haters of that build. I casted the OG Tundra qualifier to TI when Skeeter went for the Battle Fury. I, I'm sure if he went for the Fuzo, Tundra would be on TI. <laughs> I'm still mad with that decision too today. Yep, it's uh... It's kind of a choice you have to make and on one hand I yeah you kind of want to try and keep up in the farm with troll but uh, on the other hand you kind of want to win the game before the troll gets fat. So I'd rather choose go for the early game. I mean you've got a legion commander you kind of want to take fights every single time you got a voker. I mean their lineup on the radiant side was pretty much perfect for early game advantage but they barely wanted to take a single fight in the early game. Cataclysm comes out, but uh, no. And this gets popped. Tavo uh, made a very, very big mistake. Cataclysm is now on cooldown as well. Duel got completely wasted, and they get a free B on top. 50 seconds, and no LC. And they only need one more set of racks to finish up the game. Oh, we have Domi going down, and strongly believe that the last set of hacks. We will also go down. No buyback on Ogre. No buyback on Legion. HFM pops his BKB very early. Timbersaw, he's A-OK. -okay. They turn it around. They're going to go in onto the fight. Uh, no in trouble, but they're going to just surround that Ursa. And there's nothing HFM can do. The GG gets called and 
Well, the surprise first map win. You went for 2-0 on the side of Wolf Team. <laughs> However, we stand very much corrected. Because Omega Gaming came to play and definitely showing up in this series right now. I might be good at draft understanding, but on teams, I guess my bias is making me wrong. But I, I guess everyone was expecting Wolf to show the better Dota, but no, Omega Gaming, they made the better decisions into itemization, into playing the Roche area on the right times, taking the right fights, and Mingate and Lisex, they didn't even die on the game. That shows how easily it went for Omega. I wouldn't call easy, of course, because they beat three players that were on TI, two players that were on last TI. But they made it seem easy. Yeah, Omega Lul Gaming managed to absolutely yeah. destroy 30 to 9. That is only the first in this best of three. Will Wolf Gaming come back or will it actually get baffled at the fact that it gets destroyed in this uh, Division 2 for a steamy sake? I hope not. But we'll have to wait yeah. and see until after the break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, game back game. ladies and gentlemen. Game number two between T Wolf Team and Omega Gaming is uh, about to start their draft. And oh, well, we saw an absolutely stellar first map that went in favor of Omega Gaming. My name is DK Truman, and joining me is, of course, the almighty coach Astini. This game, well, that game one was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and now for the second game, Wolf, they want to steal the doll breaker from Omega Gaming. Very well played on the first game. Oh, no. And it's a hero. I, well, okay. Things are moving fast on that draft. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why? That, that explains the sniper ban on the first match. Even though we haven't seen Omega Gaming, like... They played twice, Sniper, and they lost twice. Yeah, but that could also just be a coincidence, you know? Uh, it seems that Wolf Team, they it's know something funky's up, banned. so they banned it previously. This time around, though, not gonna happen. And, uh, and... yeah, it's... Well, it's a Sniper game. What el What more can you say? It's Sniper, but... But they play Sniper with Void, and then they put the Sniper mid. The, like, long... 24 days ago, they managed to win a game two times with that strategy. So, two games. Sniper, Void, Darkseer. So, that might be... That explains a bit the bans from our way. Will they ban the Darkseer? Will they ban Void? Well, they'll pick a hero that is amazing against Sniper, because you just stampede and send the entire team right on top of him. And he normally does... Even though he does build a little bit more tanky, he's just a squishy little hero that could completely destroy. Yeah, but I feel like the arena is so good against the Stampede. So, I feel at least on this offlane to offlane matchup, our way, they are behind even so they picked afterwards. I could see other heroes that could jump into the snipers, such as Pangolier. Which is a Tavo hero. He plays very well on the hero, but okay. We'll have well. to wait and see. I mean, currently, I do... I, I don't know who I'd prefer. I, I kind of like our ways draft because they are pretty tanky. And dying pickup tends to be a slightly more early game kind of hero. But with the sniper, it definitely changes everything up. But it is a lane dominator. He's very annoying to deal with. Well, mainly because he just steals all your strength and hits you in the face with it. Yeah, it's super good against Centaur. It's one of the few position fives that can guarantee a lane against Centaur. I'm not sure if they want to go for that Void or what they can pick here. Because usually you'd pick... I mean, they picked two cores already, so I'd say they picked two supports. Yeah. Okay, well, Mirana Mars is a pretty good lane. Spear into arrow, stuns him up. Wind Ranger at your service. Wind Ranger. Okay, I mean, good against sniper, I guess. It's for Wind Ranger, I guess for the lane. I mean, might be. Must be. Like King Gaon's hero, that's good against Undying on position four. It's not like super good, but it's not bad. Five seconds left. It's. Okay, I mean, your supports are now a Dawnbreaker and Wind Ranger, which is not the normal, you know, the standard support duo, I'd say. Yeah. But that shard does so much after the Yeah, the, the, the Gust shard is actually stupidly. Especially if you've got Center Stampede on your side as well, they can never run away. Yeah, and then you have the Dawnbreaker to connect on that area. Right, You're quite right, global with Dyer's that draft, right? You can bay. Sun Strike anywhere in the map. You have Stampede to connect. You have Dawnbreaker's ultimate. You have Rangers Gust. Ranger. Yeah, four yeah. heroes, four globals. Add a Spectre as last pick, and which is also good against the Sniper. Actually, Spectre wouldn't be that bad of a pick. Yeah, it's super good against the Sniper. It's good against Mirana. Against that back line, but again, uh, this time left. Wolf has the last pick, which is when I expect them to play better because they like to have that hard carry to hard carry matchup favor, and you can almost guarantee that when you have last pick. 
unless of course Omega Gaming gets a really good pick that's already protected, but it, I don't see any hero that like won't have a counter on on hard carry matchup now. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty tough choice. Uh, though the question is, well, you could also. Sniper is always flexible. In that regard. It seems like they play mid. Uh, I assume but, so, oh, because last time when they banned Voker, they banned Sniper. Uh, when they picked Voker, they banned Sniper immediately. So I assume it's a mid Sniper, which I guess is good against Voker. I just don't see that matchup too often. It's turn to ban. Yeah. But they Dire played pick. already also hard carry with a star mid. But most of the times, it's mid. So they can pick something like a life stealer if they want to carry. I don't know. If they want. Pick. Okay, wow. so they go for mid. Okay, that means they flame sniper, mid queen of pain. Uh, it does feel like Omega Gaming. I mean, depending on, of course, the last pick for our way. Really going to come down to if they want to take this game early or late. Honestly, both these teams kind of feel fairly Medusa. early game. Medusa pickup, which technically should be countered by the sniper. So that's an interesting choice. Uh, and that's definitely an interesting choice here. Yeah. Uh, huh. Strongly believe it's better for a sniper on the matchup, but I don't understand many things on that draft. Like... I don't like co-op against Invoker because Invoker has so much region that you cannot harass him. And you want to be able to harass the, the enemy mid laner when you pick a co-op or you want to be able to get kills with rotations and there's like a Centaur on one lane, Dollbreaker on another lane, heroes with so much HP that you cannot kill. Maybe he can kill like the Wind Ranger, but... Five not worth seconds. picking our mid laner for that. Yeah. And then... Our way are pretty Medusa. tanky. You are correct. It's gonna be hard for Quap too. I mean, I did see recently a very good combo, which is the Mars Arena into, you know, Sonic Wave that can still take down a tanky team. Pretty... <laughs> but it's one of those things you need to time every fight correctly. Then. Yeah. And then they pick the Dusa. At least it's a hero that makes better use of the Alacrity. Because they picked on the first game a lot of buffs. And then they pick an Ursa to buff. Now at least they have a very hard carry. That can carry then the game. They have that sweet timing when she gets Skadi. That they can almost... That they can secure the Roche. And then we're gonna see if Omega Game. If they skip that fight and actually manage to win the game, or if they take the fight, which again, I think is a bad decision to take a fight against Dusa Skull. You just let her take the Aegis and you take the next fight. Yeah, uh, so the predictions, which side are you edging towards here? I kind of am more inclined to the Wolf Gaming lineup, even though I think there are definitely mis uh, some problems with both drafts, but in this case, I'm gonna go for just the lineup that has some very tanky here. I will go for Omega because they realize I'm the Jinx. The team, <laughs> I think, that's gonna win. They somehow managed to pull something weird, and then they lose. And since I'd like to see the Brazilian winnings, I'm sure there is no way Omega Gaming loses this, you know? No way. And then you are going to be correct and they get 2 out. <laughs> Why am I right? <laughs> then at least I can say I'm a good analyst. Oh, they're going to go for the Dusa kill at the start. This is big. This is what you always do with a Morphling as well. Because Morphling never wants to fight for runes. So you can catch him off guard walking towards the... Oh, this is beautiful. This should be an easy pickup. HFN, thank you very much for sacrificing your life. Kill Ghost Atano and a great way to open it up. That Queen of Pain is going to be done with the bottle in no time. Seems like the red HFN movements, he, uh, as you mentioned, as a Marfling you go there, as a Duza you go there, and he always go there with almost all heroes. So they were one step ahead. Very well prepared, very clever move by Omega here.
even denying the ward afterward Pay so that they can't count to toward it because the you're probably going to send out your position five to scoop up uh, to use which, which is game winning because you tilt because like the carry is like oh i just died here because they have a ward and then our position five is so happy okay i'm gonna de ward i'm gonna get some gold and then he doesn't did place one on the high ground where he couldn't find a ward gonna send out a courier yeah with another sentry that he's probably gonna place behind and then he has nothing to get rid of uh, i mean marana is pretty happy right now because she could just use yes. sacred arrow to farm up some uh, jungle creep camps that's not gonna get counterwarded by the dawnbreaker and of course yeah. stand on top of it and make sure that you don't it doesn't spawn that's gonna mean you're gonna be busy with that the entire time <laughs> Yeah, but that's a lot of harass coming from Mirana. If you wanna just walk there and block the camp, that's what Out it's going to. You take a lot of damage. Dead. I wonder what idiot got it killed. Not really. Dark Demon, he wants to do damage to HFM. Oh, top lane, undying. Went for a first item. Tango's into boots, which as a five position on dying is an interesting choice to start the lane off. Of course, you do have that movement speed to just go and brutally bash your opponent, which is pretty nice, but <laughs> it's not necessarily what you'd expect at the start of the game. Yeah, I guess the way he has to trade has uh, with killed. Rangers good on it? move speed. Nice two man decay. RD slowed down. Does of course still have the wind run. That's fine, but this is a very dangerous lane for both sides. Playing on the very edge. In the meantime, Yodomi getting speared. Bottom lane. Drop in low. The Dawnbreaker taken down by Lissax and another kill for Omega. Have a good cry in the afterlife. Yeah, he has that sentry. He didn't put anywhere anywhere yet so Mirana is gonna farm that side camp or maybe even pool now <laughs> they do lose the sniper though to Davo that is pretty big does get at least the experience uh, the wind ranger king rd getting taken down so that's at the very least but it is a pretty dangerous lane if they get on top of you sniper is of course a very squishy hero yeah, but a smart decision from King Gong to trade his life because now he's back to full HP and has a solve. And then dying, he decided to stay alive. Oh, they go for the sniper again. Oh no, yeah. The undying is miles away. Does have a soul rip, but is too late to rejoin. He was waiting for his courier. He was actually pulling the creep wave and waiting for his courier. Almost gets taken down, but the problem is sniper now has to walk to the lane. And this is huge. This is... <laughs> Lane winning right now. Shackle shot. In comes the centaur stomp. John dropping load. Try and possibly heal, but unfortunately taken down in the running King RD. Suicides to get that quick respawn. The problem is, the, even if he respawns, he still has to wait 15 seconds until he can TP. Yeah, but again, it's... Super good for Wolf here because Hello, that's it. Mike then dying, he decided to stay with all resources in lane and get with his core here the region. He should just have suicided. So Sniper wouldn't have died at first and he would come back full resources and with region for the Sniper. But he decided to stay alive. So dying is good on Undying. Have this in mind. Yep, dying is good. We heard it here first for Mastini. No. Of course, he definitely doesn't want to do it. Because he's John! Too bad. But uh, unfortunately, in this case, uh, it probably would have been for the better. Not that, I mean, Sniper does need to find some stacks later on to farm up and get himself back in the game. Because planning stage not going too well after those two deaths. Davo. EMP is going to connect. 40R pretty happy with that one. But he does get a uh, nice observer ward that kill at the very least. About to be Radiant's top rubble. I feel like the Tusk Sniper combo works so well on lane. And this Undying Sniper combo, not so good. But at least 
on the late game or at least mid game fights, it's gonna be worth like having this undying instead of a tusk that we've seen before because you have the tombstone, so it provides so much vision that the sniper can fight. In trouble, there's gonna be the tombstone dropped. John heals up Minga T, keeps him alive. Tavo taking a lot of damage, but they find the kill onto King RD. Tavo is being slowed down. He's just gonna go for the TP away. They don't have a way of interrupting it. And great move from Chan. Keeps his sniper alive and gets him a kill on top of it. I don't think that Tavo would die there. I actually think that sniper would die for the retaliate. I, I believe two more hits from the sniper, he would die. Mid. Uh, King already gets a kill. Bottom lane. In the meantime, trade. Dark Demon on the Mirana who's going for the Spirit Vessel. As the first item. Gets himself another catch. And there's a lot more action this game. I mean, last game, I think six minutes in, we only had one kill. Thank you. Yeah, especially on the top lane. But also, you see, like, King Gong, he left the lane and he got a kill mid lane. Now. Both supports playing for the mid lane. They realize they can't let Tunnel get the power up rune because otherwise he can do so much. Oh, this axe taken down. Yudomi gets the kill. That is pretty big. I mean, the Dusa is currently pretty big. Second in net where Tavu is no first. The side lanes are going in the way of Wolf. Whereas mid is just a slight advantage still for Tano, but just ever so slight. Because of course that Voker got a kill, well, assist onto the death of Tano. And he's actually currently half a level ahead of the enemy Quap. And he has a Mirana to help him mid, but it's a Quap. Like, it's not like an Ember or OD or anything that will have a setup. Or the arrow. No. Oh. Drops the tombstone, set the stampede, Tavo gets the kill, they turn around for that tombstone. We'll get some extra cash on top, Minga T in trouble, needs a rotation, that's gonna be the Mirana. Tavo, he doesn't have a way out, Assassinate comes in. Dark Demon needs to hit a nice arrow, actually uses double leap, now he doesn't have an arrow. Tavo with some TP, oh! Yes, he gets away, somehow magically disengages. HFM finds this X bottom lane, all of a sudden it's turning all the way the wolf way. I don't think so. Yeah, I feel they're outplaying every move now. It's what we were expecting on the first game. Meanwhile, Tunnel, he uses the ultimate to secure a kill to King RD, but he can't even steal the stacks because he doesn't have mana, he doesn't have resources to stay on this area. He doesn't have max level screen of pain either, so killing creep camps is not the easiest. So 40R going in on to Tano. Chan's nearby to bail him out in case it goes wrong. Yadomi coming in from behind though. Tano needs to be careful, doesn't have a blink available. That is gonna be another big catch, Tano. No blink, no way. Yadomi, does he escape the two supports on the chase? Actually, it's only gonna be the Undying right now. And the Undying is in a little bit of trouble. Drops the Tombstone on the low ground to keep it away from them. But Chan is going to get taken down. And Tombstone's just going to get right clicked for that extra cash. Dark Demon, another death for DR. Gets a double kill. Assassinate doesn't take down Yodomi. And yeah, as you said it, right now it's just purely outplaying the Wolf team. Uh, the Omega gaming. Yeah, they didn't even manage to kill Yodomi. He had the uh, infused raindrop, so survived the assassinate. Mingata, he doesn't have anywhere to farm. Not even his own jungle, he's gonna die now. Yep. And yeah, it's a completely dominated by our way. And even though, like, Medusa is just farming. It's not like the first game that they had HFA joining the early fights because he needed to. He's just free farming 5k network. In nine minutes? That's impressive. Yeah, he's out of free lane. Nothing that they could really do against him because he had that bodyguard of a Dawnbreaker. Putting him in the front the entire time. Uh, they are rotating to try and get rid of the tier one tower bottom. But in the meantime, Top is also going to get taken down. Tavo on that centaur has got himself the full vanguard. going to go for the blink dagger next once the blink dagger is up. 
running, he's going to be able to make a lot of plays around the map. Well, they kind of don't really need him right now because the three-man army, that is uh, the Wind Ranger, the Dawnbreaker, and of course, the Boker are already doing plenty. Down mid, going to get caught again. And dying gets his fourth death going. Oh, they will find the five position of Wolf Team in trade. I feel like they can even defend that tower if they feel like, because Mars doesn't have mana and he doesn't have that soul ring. But they will just trade mid for bottom tower, which is super worth. And King Gaon probably go annoy Mingata's farm. John TP's right next to all of his enemies. Sonic Wave does pretty much nothing. Tavo Center Stampede. The heal at least will keep Chan alive, but they just run away. Like they don't care about the tombstone and any other spells coming through, though the arena, that's a big one. 40R getting caught. Invis detection needed. They will at least find that five kill streak. Taken care of, but they lose Chan in a trade again. Nonetheless, a 4k net with lead. And Odusa is now towards mid, but 6.5k in. Odusa is huge. Yeah, it's part of his farming route, so he's fine. He farms that wave, he goes to the triangle or enemy jungle. Very close to the Manta. And a little bit of miscommunication here from Wolf, because while they stumpy out, Yadomi was joining on the front line on the front line like in the tombstone so a little bit of a miscommunication but even though they keep such a huge advantage oh mingate on bot 4dr got him mm, no he gave up evoker doesn't have a real item yet i mean he got an urn and anomitis but after the bots, then he's gonna go for his actual for like these are nice items, but not useful. Useful gets himself uh, a blink. That's when uh, the Voker really becomes scary, even though he's already pretty scary. Oh, up the ground they go. Two man stop. Nope, they just walk in. They are gonna go for Mingati. They just completely ignore the undying. That says enough. Walking past him, don't really care. He's dusted up as well. Make that two kills plus a tombstone means extra cash. 150 for King RD. Steals it away from Tavo though. Bit disappointed in that regard. But right now it's just a snowball. This is pure snowball. And it's going to be again another game where we're probably going to see a sniper lose. Yeah. I really hope my king doesn't like that hero. Because if I have to pick him, I don't want to be playing. I just don't pick him. Just... What does your team care about picking Snipes? You're like, ha! I'm the coach here. Look at me. <laughs> so I can see the hero working, but not first phase. Domi, Sonic Wave, but pushes them away from the arrow. That is just... I mean, of course, otherwise he'd get stunned up, but that is just so unfortunate. Another Sonic Wave just doesn't do anything. I mean, got eight. Honestly, that, yeah. Like, honestly, when you lose three lanes, it's really hard to blame a specific hero pick or not like blaming players. It's just like, you lost three lanes. No matter if the hero was good for the game, the game gets somehow unplayable because they're just all over the map. Sniper has nowhere to go to farm. And they're uh, the sniper. I mean, as you said, a couple of mistakes in the laning stage. Outplays coming in from Wolf Team. And uh, they get themselves in an incredibly awkward, impossible position. Tano charged in. 6k disadvantage. 7k, sorry, in 14 minutes. That means 500 gold advantage per minute. HFN is on 9k right now for the blink dagger on the Dusa just to get on top of that sniper. Yeah, it's an interesting build now that you can upgrade our dagger so it can still be useful in the late game. You can even scale with the item. You can farm camps faster. So interesting choice. And they will get the kill on Mars now. They just die everywhere on Omega. 
Yeah, he doesn't have a blink, of course, so he's trying to find some farm on the map, only has that armlet. Well, toggling is nice, but it doesn't really work if a poker is on top of you with the urn plus uh, the cold snap keep up. And this game invoker went for the build that I suggested on game one, that is going Midas after the urn. You scale way better than going for the Vessel. Vessel is just too expensive. Well, a catch on to Tano. Tano Grave again, pushes for the R away, but they lose Dark Demon. Doomstone gets dropped, that's just again free money. Under 50, thank you very much. It's all the time just free money. Mars doesn't have a blink, so I don't really know why he's farming right next to them. Sunstrike strike comes in, Tano's not going to be connected to Bomb, but Tavo does find him. Blink of some... I, they're lurking, like... They're staying in the area too much, so they are getting absolutely destroyed. Yeah, and they used all spells to try to burst the invoker, and now he's full. So, okay, he to beat base, but still. Do you think this has something to do with, like, the servers? Illusion. The fact Could be also. They, they, of course, are playing on the uh, Brazilian servers right now, because I do see sometimes where it just feels like they're slow. You know, that slight half a millisecond delay that they have compared to Brazilians who are, you know, they turn around when they see something immediately throw their stuff. And just like there with Omega, you saw the Mars, he spotted someone out, but it just took him that second longer to throw the spear. Could be. Definitely could be. Gotta get some new servers on the western side of uh, Brazil. There's one Argentina new server, which I heard works very well, both for Brazilians and Peruvians, and should work well for Bolivians. I'm not sure why things are not using, they are not trying that server. I think it's, um, Valve tools, probably. Uh, I, I don't know how that all works. I just stick to Western EU. <laughs> because I heard something like, I don't know why, but in Bolivia they have really bad ping for Brazil server. That it's easier for them to play in North America than to play in South America, which is the Brazil server. That must sound atrocious. Well, it's, you know, this game's also pretty atrocious. 5 to 9, 11, in network advantage. Nature Fan has barely done anything this game. Like, he's just been farming, he's done with the blink manta style. Going for the Ayascati, probably. Yeah, and by that time he would do Roche, but he feels like he doesn't even need it. Just going mid, even without Aegis. He feels so strong. Surprising that he didn't take down Roche yet on the Radiant side. Maybe, you know, of course, fearing. There's one way that Omega can come back as a bad Roche fight. Oh, I think they yeah, but also need a bit more. They just getting kills everywhere, so the game is good for them the way it is. And now they will kill the sniper, yeah. they're dying. Honestly, this is a GG call, right? Like, oh, I can't even get the spear off. Sonic Wave in the arena does a nice attempt, but yeah, they just... All five dead, GG gets called. Yeah, this is yeah. kind of what you much perfectly expect. Looks to be disintegrated. A very quick second map secured by a wolf team and honestly we can discuss you know as you said the picks the choices and whatnot what does it matter they got outplayed they got outgunned and it's really gonna come down to who gets the third map which the third region to play in yeah, I feel like if Wolf, they manage to play how they play that game, they don't lose. That's what I was expecting from them on the very first match. Seems like they, not, they needed some warm-up, and now they are all warmed up. So I would expect that they show a good performance on Game 3 again. And they definitely came up swinging, but of course that was map slash game number two. And for the final deciding match, we'll be going to a short break. We'll be right back after these messages.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to map number three between Omega Gaming and Our Way. We are uh, already quite a bit on our way in towards this draft. Sorry, Wolf Team. I keep saying Our Way, but it just it's right there. But it is actually supposed to be Wolf Team. Uh, my name is DK Truman, and joining me is Astini for this final deciding map between teams. And uh, well, who's going to be finally winning their first match? Uh, and we had a coin flip, Peruvian server. So if we are taking, let's say, servers into consideration, we can expect more to look like as game one. But I don't think, like, I do agree that servers, they do play a role, but not that big. So I expect our way to still play very well as they did on the second game. And I just realized now it's Omega Gaming that has the Dusa because they are now picking heroes that our way love to. And our way they open with Tusk Queen of Pain, which is quite new to see they draft those heroes. They've been drafting Volker on the last five games. And now that Invoker is banned, they go with a cop which I believe does some very different work than the Invoker. But fine, looking forward to see this new strategy Ten from them. That's definitely going to be an interesting five showdown. Seconds. But there we do have, as you wanted to see, the Tavo Pangolier. Most likely, especially with the Tusk. Flash Buckle uh, with the uh, tag team. You can mow down a Dusa pretty quickly. Treant Protector, though, to keep the Dusa alive. An interesting showdown. I mean, the ultis from Omega Gaming work very well together. Mars Arena keeps the Dusa alive. Dusa Stone Gaze, no one can touch her. The Treant to hold them in place, which is superb against a Tusk, Queen of Pain, Pangolier, three heroes that hate getting root. Yeah, and the Treant Ultimate pierces spell immunity, so it's a way to hold the Pango. Uh, during the ultimate, they could go for something like a Bane, of course, but Trint seems like very reliable for a team fight with so much AoE control with the Dusa, with the Mars, now the Hoodwing. Well, the Hoodwing we've seen today had such a rough lane that I feel somehow bad with the hero. Five but seconds. And you have like Pango that can find you in the trees. You have Queen of Pain. But yeah, they just want to hide in the trees with the Trink Protector and the Hoodwink. Uh, Timber is banned. Timber, of course, banned out because, well, you don't want that anymore if you're a wolf team. That first game, Timber was uh, quite enough. One showdown. Yeah. Our... This is open. It's a way to break the trees. If they run five Pangolier, it's something they can do. I just go Enigma. Just boom. They can also do that. It's a Tavo hero. But like, Pango is a hero that Tavo loves. But Yadomi can also play the hero. So they definitely can go Beastmaster if they want to break the trees. And they can go any other position tree that they feel like. But I believe the reason that you pick Pangolier is to have the Disarm into the Dusa, and you most likely want it to be a core Pango. Oh, so it's gonna be a Snapfire pick. Still, you know, they can swap the Tusk Snapfire between the two lanes, if they want to. But, honestly, they, they're, like, reasonably tanky, the Tusk Pangolier Snapfire, and Quap, but they're not really tanky, so they need to be very careful in team fights. They can easily die to a Deuce just by clicking Rounder, or Mars Arena and Spear, all of them, to be fair. There is, of course, a save to get them out of the arena with the Tusk, the, pa the Snapfire to cookie them out, in that case, but uh, it's definitely not going to be a safe game for Wolf Team. I mean, I really like Omega Gaming's draft right now, straight up. And they can last pick mid or offlaner also, right? Because this Mars can go mid, they can go, if they want, let's say, with a Bloodseeker to very hard counter the Pangolier, they still have many choices. And yeah, I guess you always feel good with having a Dusa as Radiant because you have... Second. It's easier for you to do Roche, and it's an amazing Aegis carrier. So they just need 
one more hero to empower the Dusa. Could be another lockdown as the Mars that keeps everyone into the same place. So you can hit a hero that would do exactly the same would be the Puck. And Puck's amazing against Cop, against Pangolier. They could go for that choice. If they want an offlaner, again, the Bloodseeker is an option. The Beastmaster is also an option for them because you have that roar, uh, piercing BKB. You have the Hulk giving vision, so you can fight targets with the Mars. And they ban. Okay, they ban the Bloodseeker and the. Puck. The position three best option and the mid laner best option. Good bans coming from our way. And they still need to find a safe laner. I mean, we could always the the old classic Terrorblade, for instance, chosen up just to try and split the map open completely. The Mega's not great. You can split push. You get an HFN TB in there. Anything in that regard, you could definitely make it problematic. Try and the enemy's back. But what do you think is going to be the safe laner? Of course, we first have to check out Omega Gaming. They're going to go for the Ember last pick mid. That means your lane, the safe lane on Dire side will be up against a Mars Hoodwink. So, what's your prediction? Who is it going to be? I wait. I like PA here, but I have no prediction because from HFN pool, five seconds remain. Just not so sure. I mean, you kind of need something tanky, right? uh, something that can survive, because the rest of your team you dies pretty draw? easily. <laughs> Safe lane SF, okay, well, we've seen it multiple times in, uh, like, every region right now, they almost all of it. Uh, casted two uh, maps a couple of days ago with the Shadowfiend safe lane. I think the Shadowfiend won one game and lost the other, but it depends on the build, of course. You could go the Shadow Rays build or just go for the right click build. However, I assume with laying it together with the Tusk that you're going to go for the right. You know, the skip Shadow Rays and just focus on Necromastery and the, um, the armored. Yeah, that's a lot of right click damage into the Mars until he gets the Mordesian or, or at least the Helm. But I feel like the Omega Draft is so easier to execute. I feel like they have a clear plan. You have Dusa, you do stacks for her, you can protect the stacks easily because you have a Trine, you have Ember, you have Mars, you farm stacks, you get Skadi, you do Roche. And the Roche fight from our way looks a bit weird. Uh, I don't know. Even though they have like a lot of AoE damage, it just looks weird. Well, they I feel do like have they the lack control. But they do have the damage to take Roche down pretty Shadow Fiend, Tusk, Tag Team, the Snapfire Armor Reduction, the Disarm yeah. from the Bango. It's just like I feel it's so much on Tavo to be like the frontliner to tank spells and actually control so many heroes that like Snapfire, Queen of Pain, Shadow Fiend get to do damage. For that. If they had, I feel like they needed something like a Tide if they want to go so greedy with Cop, Snapfire, SF. They need like more frontlining, you know. That's what I felt on the first Sniper game we had today. I mean, uh, Sniper is always. <laughs> Especially if you yeah. pick it early, it's just it, it so easily. Yeah, but it, it was a game they had Snapfire, Batrider, Sniper. <laughs> and I feel like Sniper was exposed all the time because there was like just a Tide Hunter protecting him. And now that's just a Pangolier protecting him, protecting the SF, protecting the cop. It's... Snowball save. You do have the snowball save of the cookie, which is a nice. Uh, and the team fight's pretty okay. You've got the Terrorize, the Sonic Wave. It's not, like, the best, but you can make it work. And yeah. the only thing that I really find problematic for the side of Wolf Team is uh, Tano on that Ember Spirit. Like, he, he can kill off the entire Dire team without any big issue. In a team fight, slight of fisting and hitting them with his uh, Flame Guard, Maelstrom, they already melt. Pretty squishy lineup, even though they are, you know, two tank supports, 
Shadowfiend's normally a bit more tanky in that regard. Pang there gets a bit more tanky, but they're still super squid. Yeah, I feel like our way they really need two wing lanes like they did last game. They just they just look like the way better team. And if they do that, of course, they're gonna have an easy game and win. But otherwise, if it's like even lanes and game starts like as game one without kills happening, just trading farms, I feel like it's so good for Omega with the Dusa. <laughs> Mingate. Waiting a long time before he walks towards that bottom lane because he doesn't want to get killed off the exact same way that they last game uh, managed to take down HFN. Yeah, it's good to learn with your mistakes. It's even better to learn with the other team mistakes, right? Wanna take that oopsie daisy yourself. It match up Quap versus Ember, which again a matchup where both of them could win. Tano could just absorb most of the Quap's damage with his flame guard, but there are also some embers that choose to just go for the searing chain slide of fist spam to kill off the Quap himself. Yeah, and you want to have that slide of fist so you can kite the Shadow Strike, but he went for the Flame Guard first level. For the arc, got level 2 really fast, he didn't manage to deny any creep. Bit of bully fast coming in, HFN first level, presence of the Dark Lord. The AOE aura, and that is the pretty much uh, classic. Oh. Right now, classic safe lane SF kind of build. But he has just one last hit, and that's the second wave. Well, the entire second wave is still is slightly more than just the entire second wave. I have the range creep's a bit annoying that he managed to get hit. I mean, the problem with SF, early, just like Sniper, kind of, the early game, your auto attack damage is abysmal until you yeah. get Necromastery stacks. And he missed. Close. Three I out of the all. four last hits under the tower because life. this hero Thanks, like you don't have that much right click but then you have the minus armor but that means the tower does more That's damage so meanwhile Yadomi that <laughs> that lane doesn't look like it's gonna go well because so you need a lot of practice to do as a safe lane it looks like easy to do because hey you just level up the aura, so you just right click, you don't have to use any spells, but it's hard to right click with 51 base damage. Man. And Mars against it with his cast range, uh, attack range and a quelling blade. And they go for a trade that they cannot take again, but Dark Demon misses the spell, so they should hey, Yadomi, quick reaction with the quelling blade right there. Bought it so that every single time the Hoodwink shows, throws out Acorn Shot, it doesn't connect and he also cut down all the trees. Very heads up pickup for a tusk, even though it's a five position tusk and you're thinking, why did he buy a quelling blade? Well, now you know. <laughs> On the mid lane, at least, things look great for Wolf. For the R, he managed to bottle up the two water runes. He's putting a lot of pressure into Tano. Tano that taking a beating bad. right now from the quad, pushed all the way back. Kind of needs one of his supports to die in TP mid to recharge his body. Yeah, he might need to go base, or if he goes greedy here and try to farm, he might get soloed by 4DR. The 17 kills in, looking pretty good in that mid lane matchup. HFN top lane as well, starting to catch up now, up to 10 Necromastery stacks. Now he all of a sudden does 75 auto attack damage. That's 50% increase. So it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, he has that plus 20. So a lot of right click, but Mars, he should have, no, no, has boots coming. I'm not sure if I am Mars here, if he doesn't get boots and go directly for the helm. So you get that extra HP regen and armor. Because if you get the early helm, you just mitigate the entire SF aura, so... You just counter the idea behind picking that hero. Online phase, of course. And that's, of course, if you want to go for the build, but most people tend to go for it. I think last game, the sex did go for it. So, it did mean that it took... Well, I don't think he even finished up a bling dagger that. 
They might just be more on the incline to go for more of a team fight kind of ordeal to try and open up the map for the team. And they're going for HFN now. Save with the snowball. And then just fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, whatever, dude. I just woke up, not even trying right now. And I'm like. That lane was looking super great for them, but now it turned the other way. Wolf's way. And HFN, I mean, of course, a couple more levels in the Necromastery, get more damage. He, uh, starter attack damage is increasing quite significantly. The Mask of Madness is also kind of the uh, first item they tend to go for on the Shadow Fiend because you can burst like crazy in the early game. And Yadomi in trouble, does have a snowball, is going to go in for the Hoodwink. They surround him, they get the catch. Dark Demon taken down by HFN and he's just going to go for the straight TP back towards Tier 1 Tower to get the last hits on the creeps that were sieging it. So great move from HFN immediately realizing uh, should not stay here any longer. That was really fast thinking from him, immediately tipping out, getting the next farm. Usa in trouble, does have a fairy fire, so trying to bait in Tavo. They are trying to bait each other in though, Tavo is gonna get taken down, but not before he finds Mingati first. Actually King RD is the one getting the kill, and leaps right into the nature's grasp. So the tree gets himself a double kill. Though, didn't level up living armor, so as a position 5 treant, you are now reported. Yeah. Is he gonna buy like a hand of my doesn't carry this? Oh, 100%. First item, Axe Rush. I yeah, give vision. So, meanwhile, 4DR almost got a solo kill on Ember, but Hoodwing TP'd, rebottle, and gave the bottle during the Shadow Strike duration to save him, so. 4DR making a lot of difference on this mid lane, and now he has the arcane, but he doesn't have ultimate and he doesn't have the points, so he needs the level 7 to rotate. You know me. Obol. I stay alive, HFN runs in, they do lose Yodomi, and looking for HFN immediately afterwards. Of course, uh, doesn't have a way to get mana back on the Mars, plus, Bushwhack ain't gonna connect, so HFN's just fine. trying to scout stacks and just fat a kill like this. <laughs> well, no stacks to be scouted, so uh, unfortunately they have cut down the tree. <laughs> nice one. Both 40R and HFN are uh, doing a good job in the farming department though. Yusa, of course, not too far behind because did die, but three assists ain't too bad for Dusa. But uh, losing the two of the three lanes is definitely not a plus that you can afford on the uh, side of Omega. HFN actually leveled up the Requiem of Souls ready. He has a point in attributes as well. He has one point in Presence of the Dark Lord and one point in attributes. I'm always impressed by the old Tavo bot. Oh, Mingati. Trying to go for the kill, though Tavo was underneath the tower, which gets a bit spooky. 40R rotated in as well. But they'll lose a player top. That should don't be down. Make that a double. Tano, big rotation. His rotation gets a double kill. 40Rs gets himself a walk back towards mid lane. That's definitely favorable for Omega there. Especially because the SF. Has to refarm those uh, six necromastery stacks, which is annoying. Yeah, and definitely something I wasn't expecting because for the air, he was dominating completely the mid lane. He got the power up room, the arcane rune at six minutes, and even though Tunnel was the one that managed to get a kill. HFN, he wants to take Dusa Tower. If they manage to defend this tower, it would be huge and they have the arena on mars so they could possibly defend it 
Go bottom lane, rotation in, overgrowth on the Shadow Fiend, doesn't have Raccoon, he's gonna get speared, HFN, another death, another problem. And, uh, th yeah, that's, that's, th well, he, he was doing pretty good in the lane, right? That's completely gone right now. This X, well, he's a sitting duck, easy finish, they probably will still take out the tier 1 tower bottom, but... SF is now down to eight Necromastery stacks. Still not a single piece of his Mask of Madness finished. Also below the Dusa currently. And it has to do the Walk of Shame. He even buys a smoke, or someone must have bought for him. So he can go faster to jungle because... It was really weird play that you just show up that way, believing you're gonna have a free tower. Maybe a bit of miscommunication that no one informed him that the Trint had six already. He had such an amazing lane. And now they're all stuck on bottom part of the map, losing so much time looking for one Trint. Even Snapfire Ultimate use. They might get the kill, but so much time lost here. Yeah, they're spending yeah. like everything to kill him. <laughs> they took forever to kill off a position five Trint. I'm not sure why Mars is showing up here, but they might want to defend. And they will. Uh, keeping it alive for the time being, Snowball on Titano means he's gonna get a nice he's added up. kill on top. Going for the Millstrom, but he's also got that Orb of Corrosion, which is super good on Ember Spirit. HFN trying to, uh, again, Catch himself back up in the farming department, though is not that far behind. A little bit of gold behind Tano, though. Mingati right now top net worth. He's been farming that top lane for, well, the entire duration that everyone was having a dual bottom. Look at those nice stacks that are waiting for the deuce as well. Yeah, they lost so much time hunting that tree, and they they spent so much spells that I, f I kind of felt like they were tilted, like kill this guy let's use everything like using Bungolier's ultimate snapfire ultimate spending so much time there and they want hfn at least they are not allowing him to farm even though they don't get a kill pros never micro so careers pressure. i don't micro careers, but pros never micro careers Dano, for instance thought that his career was coming in lose it that means his javelin is down for the count for a minute and a half while a solo kill bottom from Lissax onto Tavo. That is actually a huge kill. They are 2k ahead. And honestly, Wolf Team is not really a lineup that can play that well from behind. Yeah. Sonic Wave, ready to pump it out. Just dropping low. Jump in. The snipe's not going to connect. Tomi is so close to dying, though. I was just thinking about Tavo Chatwill, that Arteezy one that is say you don't care, you're lagging. I'm not sure if they're somehow tilted because of this. It's it's really weird to see how Wolf played game one and now he's playing game three and how well they managed to play game two. They don't look like the same thing. Uh, game two was a... Uh... Just slide that one away. It never happened. Minga D right now, if he's not playing on uh, the Sniper, which was, of course, the mistake. We, we all agree. He's looking a lot better on a hero that can just AFK farm and get himself a gigantic snowball save. Comes out. 40R on the run. Will stay alive thanks to Yudomi's rotation. John in mid needs to hold on. Luckily enough, there's no more chase from the side of Wolf Team. I mean, SF doesn't really want to do anything else but just farm. Like, he wants to be in a position where he's got Mask of Madness, Shadow Blade, probably, BKB, something along those lines to take a fight. The problem is, do uh, just farm so much fun. Yeah, I feel like this game is only playable for HFN when he has BKB. Otherwise, he just dies. Straight up dies. Ember does a lot of damage. He doesn't even have his Javelin right. Yeah. Hype. King RD. Slide the fist. Dano gets the kill. Jumps away. 
Thank you very much. 3k net with lead. And that's the mid tier 1 tower. While the tier 1 tower top gets taken down by the Dusa at the same time. And that's the thing I was talking about. How difficult it is to have a team fight as Wolves. You have so much on Pango. Like, he was trying to stun heroes. But he doesn't have any hero that helps him. Dusk might help a little bit. But it's, it's not near to enough. So... They have the damage, but they can't right-click heroes. They simply can't. That's the problem with going for a rather weak, in terms of HP, lineup. Is just can't stand the fight against an Ember Spear. Just does too much damage. AOE. Double a slide of fists, and all of a sudden, Snapfire is dead. Even though it's a strength hero. Same with the Tusk. Couple of slide of fists, and he does. He almost has his Milstrom done. They found HFN, they missed the arrow, and he... he oh! That is... Well, that is, um... A moment you're gonna tilt. So hard, if you're a uh, wolf team. 4k behind. And Dusa hasn't joined the game. Yeah, and... HFN, he had that great feeling of, whoa, they missed it. I'm going home, because ah. Mars just missed the spear, and then Hoodwings connect on the very last second. Yep, that's uh, what we call unfortunate and saddening, because the Shadow Fiend, he's going for the SNY, it looks like. But you mentioned that BKB is kind of crude. Yeah, SNY is like standing in between. Like, knowing you need damage, you need to keep farming, but you need to survive somehow. So you don't go, like, all in on that BKB, but at least you have the Sanja with the status resistance, with that extra HP. That makes you survive a little bit more, but still very hard to fight. Fiend has enough money for the Holy Locket right now. Though so he doesn't have Living Armor Max level yet. Oh my god, 40 R, staying close to the... Deuce almost kills him off. <laughs> and I feel like if Omega, they want to go Roche, they simply can enter Roche and do it. But they are waiting for the Eye of Scotty on the Dusa. So they'll take this tier 2 tower. I strongly believe Wolf cannot defend it. Yeah, uh, the Dusa, I mean, hasn't really Dyer's joined any fights. For the R. He might kill Tunnel. That could be the kill they need. Yeah, the silence comes in. Sonic Wave connects, and that is a very dead Ember Spirit. A four kill streak picked up by 40R. Great move with that immediate Orchid pickup. SX gets the Arena Spear off. In comes the Chan Overgrowth. Holds them in place. Keeps himself the Mars alive. And <laughs> big play actually jumping in aggressively. This is trying to survive for a little bit longer, but 40R should be able to get the blink in time. To safety. Well, actually, I'm saying safety walks right towards the hoodwink. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> Dark demon lurking from beyond. That is just. Well, first we had um, HFN getting slightly tilted after thinking he got out, and now it is the job for the Quap. 40R. That's a sad moment in the game. Yeah, but at, at least they got two cores on the malevolence timing and it's because omega they got way too confident and made a mistake like they were literally pushing top meanwhile they were trying to get a kill on mid with ember or like showing so deep with ember oh catch on to dark demon but there's tano and the two supports cookie stun comes out they find dark demon however tano Still have Fire Emblem available. This X gets a spear stun onto Mr. King RD. King RD is gone for the count. We'll find a kill onto Tano. So again, the Ember Spirit taken down. It's looking actually not that bad with the Ember losing his life. Davo in the trees trying to run away, but you're in the trees against the protector of those said trees. So you're not going to run away. Yeah, but again, I just. I feel like it's because Omega, they're just playing way too aggressive. They are like showing under towers. Meanwhile, other heroes showing on other lanes. So 
you keep those openings so that Wolf can come back in the game. But if they just fight as five, I can see Wolf getting the fight. Like, again, Ember is dead now, and Duze just Ooh, straight John. up beat him. Gets himself caught by the uh, Raccoon. Arena comes out, Dunn comes through, Dusa doesn't want to re-aggress in the fight, and Dusa is on the run, Sonic Wave is actually going to miss. 20 Magic Wand Charge is still being chased out, Yodomi has a Snowball in the second, and uh, yeah, Dusa is a goner, nothing he can do. Amar is looking to TP away, or will he actually? Ember is nearby, are they going to re-aggress? I mean, this is a way for them to turn this game around. If you make another big mistake here. Catch on to HFN though. There's going to be the snipe. Sharpshooter on to HFN. He's stunned up. Nice double stun. Wop with the double damage. Trying to bump up damage. Again, Tano gets taken down. Spear available for Lissex. Skewers him to the side. But there's the Tavo rolling thunder. And Lissex Mars could be finished off. Unless he gets the blink off. Which he can do. And he turns it around. Gets the smackdown on to 40R. HFN hits him with the ha 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 ha. And Tavo now in trouble. Overgrowth holds the Pangolier in place as Swashbuckle could still possibly kill off Lissex, but the spear, Pangolier, no way, Jose. Lissex, how does he survive that and get the kill? Dude's a massive beast. Omega seems like they can't click backwards. They just move forward, 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 and it's working for them. Like, even though. So. Amber dies mid because Duza is showing top. Then Duza fights while Amber is dead. Then Duza dies and Amber wants to fight without Duza. They were picking up fights all the time with one hero dead or one hero not in the fight. And even though they mentioned to get the five heroes from Wolf killed. I mean, that Treant, uh, Living Armor, has done so much that fight as well. Like, he constantly kept them healed up, even though he wasn't there. Most of it. Then he runs in, hits him with the lead seed. War healing coming out. There's going to be the stun. Con connection onto Yodomi. And Dark Demon was actually... The Hoodwink was the one that did the most damage in the fight. Dude's ult. He gets used Tavo's Rolling Thunder in return. And King RD does have a cookie. Does it keep him alive? I highly doubt it because Mingati gets another connection. While in the meantime, Sonic Wave from 40R gets used just to stay alive. And they'll have this tier 2 tower, outpost, most likely, likely Aegis if they want to go for the Roche. Things are looking pretty, pretty rough for the Wolf team here. Well, they do have the SF BKB done. So, something to get your hopes up with Astini. Yeah, I like this when players change their mind because he was going for the Sanji and Yasha as you mentioned and I'm like, oh, it's a BKB game, BKB game, definitely. So, I'm glad he realizes. Ember almost has his uh, fuels done. So if this, uh, if, you know, if either of these two teams loses, they, they're going to be 0-2. That is not a great way to start off the... Uh, second well the first dpc league of the season but really if you're omega and it, let's say you lose here i think they should be it's weird to say happy because we are looking at the game that they are winning oh no but if they if they lose this outcome. if the omega lose this they they should feel sad because this is their game to lose 100 percent. they've got full control of this game right now do says Big's got that full uh, Ice God he done. Dragon Lance next is going to be very tanky. And honestly, both team are making a lot of mistakes. Oh, this time they're going to get the catch onto the Mars. Taking quite some time to take him down though, because he is a pretty tanky boy, but won't be able to drop his arena in time. And in the trees, Dark Demon. Now Omega, they're the ones making the mistake and losing two of their players. Well, well, the rest of their team are completely on the other side of the map. I can't understand those plays that you have Amber bought on, Duza showing mid, and you just show up straight top. And now Roche is open for Wolf, and will they take 3 against 5 King 5? Might go for the steal attempt. No, Tano, a little bit too late with his attempt, and that's going to be a nice free Aegis onto HFN. This is a great way to turn the game in your favor. 
it's still right now everybody's game because a couple of mistakes from Omega. You said it previously versus the playing a little bit too aggressive. They're channeling their inner SA Dota. Sometimes you gotta pull the brakes. Such, such a clean start. And now they've made so many mistakes in a row. Um, I'm impressed. I, I wouldn't expect at all. But they are going for HFN. He has the Aegis, he has BKB, he can BKB TP out on the second life. Let's see what he does. Well, he is gonna get caught. Does pop his BKB Reckon of Souls? The TPs are coming in, but the BKB from Lissax actually means that he doesn't have a BKB for the second fight or his Reckon of Souls. King RD gets stunned up on the side. Deuce Alt gets used inside. The arena trying to keep that sobo going for as long as possible, but the control is there. The tusk gets smacked down. HFN again down for the count. They will lose the tree in the process. And trying to lock down Tano, but that's not going to be perfect for Tavo King RD on the run. But Lissex is on the chase. Ooh, that's a good shotgun blast with the shard. And Lissex will be held at bay. But again, they lose HFN because... Well, you did say very one very crucial thing. It, you know... Pop the Aegis, pop your BKB, and then TP out. Do that, or, you know, something along those lines. Use the BKB on your second life, not your first. Yeah. Trint to cancel a BKB TP, but definitely you don't use your BKB on your first life. And it's a mistake that you don't see HFN making. I, I feel like we are watching a game that played inside Dota, but what matters is inside their minds. Like, the mental part of the game is playing such a big role, because they seem to make mistakes that they don't usually make. I feel like they're somehow feeling under pressure, tilted. It's just not normal to see those mistakes from their side. Well, <clears throat> I mean, I think also the most important part was that HFN did not know that they finished up a BKB on the Mars. Like, if there was no Mars BKB there, that would have actually been the better play, because he would have just been able to run back towards the tower, even keep that Aegis alive. The BKB Reckon, but unfortunately, um, well, you know, all of that's mute, because HFN, uh, sorry, the, uh, this X just finished up is beautiful. There's Arcane on Amber. Going for 40R. So make sure he doesn't take the damage from the Quap Orchid. Arcane does, does so much for every spirit in the game. It's so good to be that Ember now. And he spots HFN. He's going for it. Oh, not again. Not again. Oh. Broken. Slow down. Jump in. HFN does have Raccoon. Needs to be careful, there's the Dusa all T charging forward, Overgrowth, they're missing all their spells here, but the Arena catches HFM perfectly, does Requiem in time, Snowball save as well, damage coming through, the turnaround, <laughs> they went too deep on Omega, they just dove all the way behind enemy lines, now Minga T is gonna be caught out, and Minga T is going to die, beautiful 4k, beautiful play, I mean HFN, a little bit lucky that he didn't get speared to the wall there and stunned, but... That snowball save on top of everything was just godlike. I the turnaround was insane. Yeah, the trink took so much to use the overgrowth. I'm not sure why. They could have straight up killed the SF and they let the SF stand between tier three tier two tower. And that's the only place that they might lose a team fight in the game, and that's exactly where they were standing. So Whoa, capitalizing on Omega mistakes. And now we have a game that was like 90% going on Omega's way. That feels like even. Let's see what our big buddy Gaben says. Well, he still says that it's 74% win rate, uh, win probability for the side of Omega. But uh, well, the experience actually dove all the way in favor of both gaming. And honestly, looking pretty problematic because that fight came charging in you wasted overgrowth wasted medusa ulti and you wasted the uh, hoodwing snipe three ultis dead gone before you even started a fight 
Yeah, and the arena was just countered by the Tusk, which is something that they can manage to control the Tusk while using the arena. I mean, the timing Especially of it was actually card. so perfect as well. Sonic, uh, he got the Requiem of Souls off and immediately got saved. Oh, Ember, Tano in trouble, stun locked, and HFN right now. He's got himself some items. He does do a lot of damage. That is 350 auto attack damage on top of your face. Dark Demon, nice TP out. Yadomi looking for more. He's gonna find the train, but he's kind of far away. But they're scared as hell. <laughs> and he gets the Dusa. Uh, yeah, won't be able to control. Even if he got the Dusa, like, his team is nowhere to be seen. They're still trying uh, to take down the Tier 1 tower, Tier 2 tower. Open up this area. So that they can uh, make sure that Roche is going to be their pickup next time. Get that free shard. And of course yeah, the Aegis, but... 1 minute 40 seconds. You know the Aegis, the Roche respawn time, and that's what most matter in this game. Mars, the Satanic, has himself the shard, so he could get a nice double spear. It's, of course, uh, a big plus. So you need to hit your mark perfectly. Lissix had a very good game so far, but yeah, they just lost the entire net worth and map advantage that they had. Everything in one bad mistake, trying to go very deep for HFN, and well, he died so many times so easily that he's pretty much the perfect bait. Every time you see him, you're like, oh, that's an easy kill. Right now, HFN, he's also getting tanky, 2600 HP, got the BKB, he's got a solid amount of armor on top. Shadowfiend doesn't die that easily, especially not with the snowball save. Yeah, he's back into the game and he has a Hurricane Pike in the cool here, so that four staff repositioning definitely super great against the Dusa. And I've you said they made one huge mistake, I'd go with two. Cause the second Aegis is when they should have ended the game, but they just like got killed on the top lane by showing three heroes at the same time when they should just go Roche and and finish the game, so yeah, two huge mistakes to have this game even. And the thing I was saying about like feeling sad or feeling happy, of course you feel sad if you win, if you lose, you feel happy if you win, that's basics, but what I want to mean is like Omega, they showed really good Dota against one of the better teams on the second division. No, I get That's that. why they should be happy. I, I get that part, but if you are that far ahead in a game where your draft is just that much better then I mean the only way that you lose is if you make mistakes so that's not the way like remembering the series the first game they played superbly especially the timber it was amazing that approach but losing a game after just being so dominant in the early game it hurts it, it yeah. Sting so much. Yes, you, if you would think prior to going into this game, I know what you meant with like, oh, we're playing up against TI 10 competitors, we're playing against one of the, you know, biggest players in South America. If we manage to make it three maps, that's already impressive. But with the way that they're playing, definitely won that. Yeah. Oh, Cash comes out on Twitch train, gets science up. They will be able to shut him down and he does have a buyback available. Arena comes through, going for the Tusk. So trying to make it a one for one trade while the Roll Thunder is now ended. They will find the kill onto Yodomi Roche is up in 45. HFN getting slowed down. Cookie Sun though, this is pretty big. Can they still knock him? Yes, yeah, Spear to the tree. HFN, he's looking like he's done for. 85 seconds does have a buyback. It's going to buy back because they want to defend Roche. Buybacks on both sides coming through. This is starting to get very problematic for Wolf Team. However, big catch onto Dark Demon Tano. Doesn't have a Fire Remnant available. He's in trouble. Ghoul's trying to keep himself alive. Yadomi is going to die back. Tano's still the round scurrying through, but there are buybacks on the Radiant Heroes, whereas the Tusk does not have one. This X thinks some more to miss kisses, but uh, 
on the run. Sonic Wave hits him on the behind and Roche up in eight. It's going to mean the buybacks will come through. Will they be able yeah, to spot I'm surprised him? it went bad for Omega because no TP on HFN. So we had to walk all the way. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> oh no, it makes sense. Something I did not spot out. Boydiard though, getting aggressive. Inga T, still in the area, does have a buyback himself. There's gonna be the Ember rejoining. Overgrowth, the big overgrowth, the held on spot. And this X, the damage coming through. They lose Miss King RDH, if a nice Rec Room. Goes for the immediate TP out, knows that this fight is lost if he continues to stay around this area. And the Pangalier, he tries to do the exact same thing, but the spear is gonna connect from this X. That means they can probably walk in towards that pit right now. There's no TP on the SF. There's... Oh, there's a buyback on the Pango, but... They're just gonna try and secure Roshan. Yeah. For the air proceeds to choke waves, so at least when they have the Aegis, they don't have any waves near his tower. That's the most he can do, because this Rosh is just gone. This is some absolutely insane Dota coming. Both these teams just constantly, brutally fighting, but this Dusa, that's the big key factor. I mean, she's now done with the shards, so that makes her a lot more tanky. Got that full date list finished up, the Ayaskati BKP. Like, this Dusa, you need to spend the entire Shadow Fiend duration just right clicking her killer. Yeah, and there's some right. Uh... Single target spells, I believe the war response count as Shadow Strike. Okay, not that much to toggle the shot. Couple of things, but not still. much. Uh. Does it also work on items? Yeah, I was thinking on that about the orchid, but it's, it's a, a spell. A spell. So. But then again, could an item also be a spell? This stuff things that I just never, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's one and of those very even, specific things. Even if an item is not a spell, they might just have it wrong in the game because that's how the game is and true. you should consider a feature. Yep, that, that's... well, it's still a beta game, so... One day we'll actually get Dota 2 re fully released. That is not this day. This day will the Omega possibly go for a gigantic upset, but considering the net worth advantage between the two sides, it's still very close. Yeah, the thing is, they have the Aegis, and there's no buyback on SF. So if SF dies, they probably have the game. But on the other hand, Ember doesn't have buyback, neither does Mars. I mean, Both currently, like the only one that has a buyback is Quap, because the rest, you know, there's Hoodwink and Dusa. Dusa's almost done. Now, well, 18, 15 gold, and she has a buyback. But on the dire side, Tavo needs a bit more cash for DR. He's got himself that uh, buyback available if necessary. For it actually does hurt quite a lot on the Quap. Has been doing a lot of work this game. Tavo going for the back line, trying to dodge the Dusa. Control up the Treant, because that would be a dieback. Treant is dead, and that is a pretty big kill. Dusa ulti has been used as well. They're going to go in for Dark Demon, make that a second one. And, I mean, this is perfectly done for Tavo. Knows exactly what they need to do, and that is just completely ignore the Dusa. Really find weird situation of heroes of Omega side, but they got the cop. Arena. But the silence immediately from the co-op gets the blink out. Arena wasted. Davo's actually going back in onto Linux. Lissix is walrus punched out of existence. They're completely just ignoring the Dusa. Oh, there is still an Ember Spirit that's a nuisance. He's got the Aegis on the Ember. Beak the TP out from Medusa and Tana will just be fine currently. But this is a pretty impressive game. Actually, the Dusa illusions are killing off Tavo slowly. They're gonna get the jump in onto Tano. He does still have that Aegis, so losing his first life doesn't matter too much. Because they can't go in for the second, the rest of the dire TP out. And honestly, all things considered, not a bad fight. That dude's TP was so weird.
because while she was tipping back to base, the illusions were killing everyone. So she just needed to stay there and hit targets. And again, about the about the distribution of heroes, like Amber was pushing top, while four heroes were standing on enemy triangle, and he didn't have any remnant nearby. So. Your Aegis hero is showing on the other side of the map while you have four heroes standing on enemy triangle. I uh, I feel bad for Omega Gaming because they seem so skilled, but on decision making, they're failing some basics. Uh, a little bit questionable in that regard. Though, of course, game is still in their hands. Usa is still pretty fat, and especially now that level 25 has been achieved, Split Shot uses modifiers, together with the Daedalus and Ayaskari, it's like the team fights become twice as hard now. Team. Yeah, and they can really bait with the Dusa. I guess they could just walk straight away mid. Because uh, with the buyback. They kill her, she comes back, they can't take her to two lives. <laughs> it's so weird to see level 25 SF and he only has three levels in Shadow Rays. <laughs> so, uh, currently, first, that Satanic's gonna be a pretty big help. Because you have, well, they do have the Quops AoE, Shiva's Guard, to reduce healing, which is pretty useful against a Treant, because Treant's got himself mech. Holy Locket, and it's a treant. And it is something extra. Got tons of healing pumped out. I'm actually curious how much healing he's done this game. Fortunately, yeah, when you too. check the fight recap, you can never see how much healing was done. It should really be an added feat. They don't care about support. Yeah, but it's still <laughs> like... I, I find that so... crucial to know in most of these in-games. Yeah, yeah. Because sustain wins the game. Yeah, I'm just kidding like that. I no know, I'm a support position support. 5 player, like, okay? Don't hurt me. Just cars matter. And talking about cars, there's an Ember with Arcane that I would think he really wants to fight, but he's on the other side of the map of his team. Oh, mid, you do me. Gonna be a Tuscaroo. No buyback. Doesn't have the 200 gold necessary. That was actually trying to get... He doesn't have his level 25 yet, so... Yeah, that's just a completely wasted rolling thunder. I think he's trying to create space. They skill the creeps then. Water? Yeah, I don't get it. At first, I thought they would like push them back by hitting the bottom tower. But I don't get it. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Oh. I guess Omega are a little bit spooked, waiting for the next Roshan. Medusa is going to go for the uh, swift blink, of course. Very solid item to have. At that point, you can pretty much sell your power treads. Yeah, it has Elven Tunic. 7% more movement speed, not something you really care about, so not the spider legs, unfortunately, which has been nerfed also. Yeah, but, you know, just wait 20 more minutes and you get those force boots, which get like a hundred, 115, yeah. that's faster than bots. <laughs> you just need to wait, right? Be patient. Wait for another 20 minutes and you got this. Oh, uh, Roshan, when will it respawn? And will it be an Ags or a Refresher Shard? Crucial question, we always ask. Ah, oh, long Roshan. Yeah, uh, already everyone has buyback by time, and I guess it's gonna be enough time that Mars, Snapfire, and Tusk farm there, so we might be looking for that 10 against 10 team fight to decide the game. Both teams absolutely terrified of what is coming through. Ember is going for the refresh orb. That's going to be always fun. You just see him, you know, 
pop all five fire remnants in the fight and two sleight of fist, then refresher, and then do it all over again. Yeah. Fire, chaos, mayhem everywhere. He went for the Chewy Slide of Fist Chargers, Talent on 25, and they found Mars. Dex pops the BKB, Arena onto King RD, stays at the edge of the arena so HFN can't kill him just uh, that easily. King RD dropping low, Dusa of course, gets an aggressive HFN, gets overgrown rooted, HFN is in trouble, Snowball save, Reckham of Souls, Sonic Wave as well, they get the fears off, they get themselves pushed back, but in the meantime Dusa, he's just right clicking away, he's got of course that the shot uses modifiers, he doesn't really give a damn about all these things that they throw at him. He's just pumping out damage like it means nothing. 4DR getting aggressive, trying to get the kill onto Tano, but he's gonna die. That's gonna be a rampage. Make that thing go, and that's absolutely insane on the side of Omega. And I mean, Deuce is literally. What, what did he do there? He just stood AFK and right click. Yeah, right click. <laughs> right click ground, and he's full life now, missing 1k mana, so he just needs to press W once and he's gonna be full resources. And this is why everyone currently is picking Dusa safe lane. Because you could literally just press A, right click in the middle of that fight, and that's as much as the Dusa had to do. Yeah, and it was a team fight that the ones most were Wolf, so they found the Mars. It should end well for them if they had means oh. of fighting that Dusa. Be Ags on the Dusa as well. Sure, why not? Honestly, I'd probably give it to someone else because Dusa can farm up that free Ags in no time, but, you know, they'll probably give it to the Dusa because supports don't matter. Yeah, but those Ags are not really good. I, I don't think, like, Trink Ags would change anything now. Hoodwink Ags. Mm. I don't attacks, feel good about it's vision, here. bro. That's vision. Yeah, but it's mostly like vision when you're playing from behind. I don't know. I you like. just play. You get some trees over there, and they don't have a gem, so they don't know if they have vision over there. Bot them coming out. You place some in their spawn in their base. I mean, right now okay. you're giving it to the Dusa, which Dusa farms that eight uh, ags up in like two minutes. Okay, maybe a little so, bit longer, but five. Omega. A catapult is gonna respawn now. It's gonna spawn now. Actually, two catapults. So I would love Ooh. to see the... King RD. I... <laughs> that was a bit of a mistake. Tried to get the sun in, but uh, the second Tano both uh, jumped at the side immediately. Yeah, I would love that they just walk straight one lane and protect those catapults that's all they need to do so don't split on the map please like don't go with amber to the very other side of the map and manage to be like three in one side and two on the other side they just need to go five men and that's it there's no mystery on what they need to do yeah no mystery looks like wolf team our history. Sorry, just had to. I popped up in my mind and I had to say. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, this would be a pretty big upset. And this dude say he's going to be very hard to deal with right now. I mean, he's got an Aegis ready. Free Ags. Got that Manta Cell just pop back, back up in here. There's going to be a jump off the list. Sex trying to get the kill. He gets the arena off. Sonic waved out of the arena. Snowball save to try and keep... The Queen of Pain alive, but that's gonna cost Shidomi his life instead. So sacrificing yourself for your course, the way of the support. And what did they really lose on the side of Omega? They lost Stone Gaze and the Arena. They forced out a buyback on the saving Mars hero. BKB. Oh, Mars BKB, yeah, but he's got a standing, he survives a lot as well. 40R going for the back line onto Tano. But uh, another snowball save necessary. This is going to cost the puck his li uh, the puck the tusk his life because he cannot escape anymore from that position. 40 is going to still die. And the chase for the back line. Tano on that ember going ham. That refresher making him nutty. Gets stunned up. Oh, Minga, like what does it all matter? Dusa is the one that's actually a threat. 
They managed to take one of the lives of Dusa while everything was going on. But not enough. But she has a buyback as well if you've even found your chance to get that second. And Tavo. Yep. Finisher, HFN. Pops his ulti. Might be able to get John! But no way, even the Yules to make sure HFN does not kill off your Triant and the Ancient gets taken. Now that is indeed the upset from Omega Gaming. These are three TI players on the side of Wolf Team and they got destroyed. I mean, this is a big surprise, especially after that second map, Destiny. Yeah, what an upset and Omega Gaming playing amazingly. Our way, they had such a good second map, they seem to be like so superior on that game, but this third game, I don't think their draft helps so much, but still, if they played like the second game, they would still manage to, to get a win. But excited with what Omega Gaming shows here, like we, we were kind of, almost everyone was expecting Balrogs and our way to have some easy life on second division but doesn't seem to be one at least for the wolf team as they start 0-2 on that second division run and there's of course a lot more scary teams in division 2 i mean infinity as well another team that you really should be very careful of uh Interitus lost to them as well not look too great currently but look at that treant though did a nice solid 15k healing that game and we all know of course dusa is just you know game winners everyone should just always ban dusa that simple ban dusa and ban weaver but it does look indeed like this is going to be an absolutely beautiful division two season because honestly a lot of teams are making it competitive at the start of course right now I mean, the two teams that are at the top of the board did briefly mention them already. It is Infinity, who are 2-0, and Balrogs, who are 2-0. The rest of the teams, they pretty much are either 1-1 or 0-2. And, and surprisingly enough, Wolf Team is 0-2, together with Team Known. Well, Steenie, any closing words from you? It was... Great to be here with you. Thanks everyone that was watching. Unfortunately for the Brazilians, it was not today, but really congrats to Omega. I'm really impressed with what they show and looking forward to their next games. Yeah, of course for him, a little bit unfortunate loss, but uh, still it does keep the group impressive because Wolf Team, of course, they have to come back from behind. They have to crawl all the way back to try and get themselves in towards the seven to try and give well, seven, no, five, two scoreline is all they can get <laughs> currently to try and still make it forward towards the next stage. But there's plenty of opportunity there. They can they still have to face off against Infinity, for instance. That is something in the future right now. Congratulations to Mega Gaming. They performed terribly. Of course, that will be the end for us here today. I don't necessarily know out of the top of my head if Division 1 is playing. I'm quick. Check. Yeah. It is. It's. Uh, we have Infinity playing their second game in their run against SG that are just going to play their first game right now. So the first game of that SG new lineup with ARMS, KXI, uh, Hiko, LTH, and Weege. So super hey. hype match. Yep, and they're up against the infamous lineup, of course. So that will be it for us for today, but there's more Dota coming your way. So don't go anywhere. And uh, have a wonderful evening, or at least for me, evening right now. Right. <laughs> My name was DK Truman. Next to me was Astini. Have a wonderful day. And in case we don't see, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.